All right, let's get started. Uh, we are... We are forgetting my D6s, first and foremost. Uh, let me grab those out of here. One, two, three D6 is what we need for Ex Novo. Always forget something during the starting soon. But we were working on Dendron, which is this town right here in the the town that's in the polar area on that map. Let me, oh, you know what else I forgot to do? I forgot to open the existing history of this, um, of this town, because I do remember some of it, but other parts I do not. Da, da, da. Open my campaign folder here. Not in the one shots, but the not Carsis. Ah, here we are. True guy, the continent this is, has lore. We've written down our lore about true uh, about triad, but I had not sat down and written down the, the lore about. I had not sat down, sat down and written down the lore about Dendron. What I do remember about Dendron is that that river-looking thing is not a river. It's a crack in the glacier. This river-looking thing here. Uh, I also remember that this is an aqueduct because it took me forever to do. And it was an aqueduct by the... Um, by the Leopard King's people, I think, is the people. I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of wanna. You know what? We have system audio in. The, do we have system audio in this layout? Why do we not have system audio available on this layout? That seems. Oh no! It it does exist. Uh. Tell you what, we're gonna go. Th we're gonna take a crash course in the history of Dendron, super quick because I forgot to do that before stream. So if you're not a fan of hearing my voice over recording rather than live, prepare your ears. Where did I put it? Tabletop tinkering, ex novo two, there we are. This is technically the third episode of Ex Novo. Welcome, welcome. We are can you playing all hear that? Ex Novo. You all can hear that. Guess it's not being transcribed. Oh, shoot. It's, it's not being transcribed in the captions. Tell you what, it. if you need captions, uh, I'll call out a timestamp once we settle on where we are. Ever shiny. And you can start the... Um, introduce start the VOD at that timestamp. Um, so... To... Go sit on the bed, okay? Or you can Okay, that. so those trees fine. are a land okay. item. Anyway. Correct. Hello! It's been many moons since I've seen you in the chat. How are you? We're uh, working on some campaign planning for my current D&D campaign, and I'm listening to myself talk because I forgot to write down the things for this. I'm pretty good, honestly. I've been working remotely. That's been an adventure to adapt to, but I kind of enjoy it. Hey boy. Um, where was? Boy. Uh, road lines. Uh, on their way from whatever that lower continent is, they were looking up here. They're like, "Well, there's got to be something up there," so they were looking to trade. It was a ruler's whim. Uh, yeah, so we know that the first, uh, these, these, uh, crowns are, these crowns are citizens of the Leopard King. We know that. Let me write that down. Dendron. 
Dendron. Two major factions. The citizens of the Leopard King and the Black Diamond. Leopard King's people are mostly Tabaxi, obviously snow le leopard themed. And the Black Diamond people are half elves. We know that. Primarily ranger types. As we listen here, the less I'm going to have to listen because I'll remember more of it. <clears throat> Be periodically. Uh, I think a ruler of. Then we're going to paint this in. And then Neuron, which is a small island place. So this is a city of Tabaxi. Uh, sent as an sent as a, an exploratory mission from a larger city of Tabaxi further south, and uh, eventually these Tabaxi become like snow leopard Tabaxi faction here. But Tabaxi, we've already said. To uh, I literally went and I go and get the C. 5th edition if we can handbook to try and find half elves. There are gnomes on a topic to stumble into, so I'll try the black diamond or something. I'm not sure. Maybe it's maybe at one point they had it and then they lost it among the tundra. Ah, uh, yes. No. You know. uh, the order of the black diamond initially had a literal black diamond that was a powerful magical artifact. Um and they were hunting for it uh they they lost it at some point uh on this large tundra area here and they've been looking for it ever since as a rite of passage to survive out on the glacier with nothing Rite of Passage. Go look for it. No, and there. Uh, there are these continents are being planned for a reason. They'll show up. We're into it. Not finishing this city, obviously. The city is fine by me. Fair. Four, four, two. Doot, doot. Uh, and they build a large school, and we're going to put a thought bubble here. Ah, the thought bubble's thought bubble a school. King. Leopard King citizens build a school. Now, where this is on the timeline in relation to the the, because Carsis and the rest of the world have differing calendars, um, because of plot reasons, um. And so where all of the things I'm planning actually lie on the local timeline versus the Karsis timeline are unclear. We're, I'm going to make that decision eventually. Is the a large school from the citizens of the Leopard King, and they 
go to school here, and they learn a myriad of things, everything they can. And it's a large school at the time, and it keeps getting built upon, provided it survives into the present. And uh, at this early point, uh, education is settled upon as a very important matter. I like that. And it makes sense that education is settled right. upon as a very uh, important and, and thing in this land, uh, just for the sheer sake of where it where it will take where it will take the campaign to have the players come here. It'll be a bit of like a sister city to Ant Chime. Uh, somewhat in that there are there are certain cities that are plot that are I expect to be plot relevant. You never know with players they may decide to go to a different area but cities i expect to be plot relevant will have like a large school or something so that Anchime knows about them obviously there will be other other cities on the map for the players to see you know at some point in Anchime they'll find a map of like a globe or something and it'll be like oh well i didn't know there were other continents and they have all these cities like, it, th what I expect to be plot relevant will not be the only cities on the map. So? Uh, some find out if the elves gain some power this time. 2-1-2. Two, 2-1-2. One, two. Two, one, two. Not in yellow roads, they don't. Um... They also expand upward, and I think, I like the idea of deceit powering this expansion. I think that someone, in a very... No better way to relax after a class. Fair enough, Green Rex. ...convinces the half-elves that they need a specific school I'm... to teach people to find the Black Diamond. Yeah, uh, sorry, I read the chat in the stream VOD. Uh, I'm going through the stream VOD because I forgot to take notes on it last time. Hello, hello! Uh, and I needed to give myself a crash course in the lore that we decided on last time. The half-elves are tricked into building a school of diamonds searching as if they wouldn't learn those skills in their day-to-day -day life anyway. They are like, before they take our land, we'll take it for ourselves. Mm, maybe. I, think I really like this place, this and I can't wait to learn more about it. This idea, Thank you. Has that idea, but I don't know if that is culturally an idea, etc., etc. Okay, what else is left? Uh, does this school explain? have a There's name? There's a lot the, there. The Leopard King School has a name. It's called the Clouder. I like that. Ah, it's a group of cats. The Clouder. I forgot I did that. Locally known as the Clouder. See, this is why I'm um, rewatching this wait, no. to is make sure I take leopards, notes. Uh, does a, oh does no, it's a leap. Leopards have a collective noun. Because I know because house the, the cats collective are a nouns. I mean, look, I think leopards for are like a business. Or a leopard something? is like a leap. The literary leap. Ah, the literary leap. There we go. The literary leap. Literary leap, maybe? Yeah, literary leap. Wait, wait. I'm clearly typing in the stream. Where did I... Did I have... No, oh, no, I'm the, putting it in the chat. Uh, Hang on, brain loading. What is my brain loading about? 
Oh, oh brain loading. One second. Uh, why, something with why optics. Is my brain loading? This school has a name because you know, Rangers are all about seeing oh, it's things the, and not being seen. The Black Diamond school name. Is there like a half elf group term? I kind of. Uh, they're basically just humans, but more. A cornucopia is a group of humans. As a term for half elves. Hmm. Uh, uh, Quescopine. Like, That's what it was. Quescopine. This rival school is called the Quescopine. Because it's got scope in it. Scope in. Like, what are you scoping? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, there was a point in that the, one. Um, You're right. Before I get too ahead of myself. We have. Oh, also, events. speaking of and getting ahead of myself, um, guess who forgot to tell you that I have a Discord bot now? <laughs> so there, there, there are, are not Discord. Well, I do have a Discord bot. It's just not running. I need to start my Discord bot again. I have a, tw I have a, uh, a bot in Twitch chat now. By the way, so it, it, here's the command. Here's the commands, rather. That's all the commands. There they are. Well, that's all the not secret commands. I don't know that my uh oh yeah, the bot bot commands don't show up in my chat display. Huh, noted. Did not know that. 16 citizens left. Secret commands. Wait. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. Every so many chat uh, messages, uh, the bot will post one of a set list of commands. But this would be to remind people that I do certain events. things. Uh, so is this where the so crazy? I didn't expect this. I know. That's so this is I where the glacier is rendered, really right? Some crazy stuff. Yeah. And it Ah, uh, yes. This is and then the then the glacier is rendered. In the search for um for the black diamond, someone tried to do a big spell take a shortcut creates a massive split in the existing glacial wall that is there uh, so there's gonna be make the tundra more habitable and fruitful uh, theoretically it would because there's this now this huge split in the glacier so it moves like in was it intended to make that face open to was it intended to make the area more habitable and fruitful no but did it yes produce you know uh i don't remember the technical term but a river within the glacier and it's it's a whole thing and there's like potentially you know microbes and moss and etc 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 it's a whole thing so we're gonna put a great big split shape And Just then after the split shape... Uh, Elendrid is not the word I'm looking for. I reached for Elvin and my brain grabbed El Elendrid. With this, I imagine scholars from all over the place would come to see what happened. There was absolutely an emissary group from Anchheim inspecting this like, Dang! These guys are rangers. They're half-casters. How do they do this? Yeah, like, that moment is probably why Anchheim knows about... Uh, about our area, which it which has a name, by the way, uh, Dendron. I kind of wish I had uh, taken these notes add, off of stream. Because they were, like, trying to do this, obviously they gained some power on the event. I mean... Okay. 621. Extreme temperatures. Freezing nights or unbearably hot winds wreak havoc. How do people and animals cope? And what parts of the infrastructure break down? I think in splitting the Ah, uh, and then the splitting of the glacier uh, 
it does. It releases some kind of Winterfell vibe, you know, turn five. Causes a horrifying winter by releasing some kind of cold spirit. Um, let's say that the uh, that the black diamond releases some kind of cold elemental. You know, borrow the borrow some ideas <clears throat> from the black diamond in that they recognize that snow is an incredibly insulative material and you know they borrow some of the there is a frost walker ranger subclass that i do plan on using in this area by the way i think it's a homebrew thing but i'm definitely planning on using it they are cultural practices because it's the only thing that'll get them through this horrifying snowstorm yeah, this, like past me said, uh, this also leads to the so Leopard King citizens uh, borrowing a couple of the Black Diamond's them. cultural I think practices. To, I think someone maybe heard about the tundra up there, and they're headed in that direction to try and find some, you know, easier living. some of the black diamonds culture uh, and they gain a citizen Ten leopard kings in the skip, skip, in skip. the halls of the leopard king you know where they are from it's very easy for them to acquire taurine rich foods here they don't know what they're doing ah yes and they taurine lose uh, taurine is a is a vital resource for uh, cats. By the way, if they become deficient, in it, they super die. When they borrow the practices, is it like an appropriating type of thing, or or a we live together, let's share cultures thing? I I want to come at it from the we live together, let's share cultures kind of thing. They're not like outright taking it and being like, no, I made this. No, they're like they recognize like, okay, okay. We're not from here. We gotta learn to live here. These people know what they're doing, so we're gonna we're gonna borrow their ideas with credit. I don't want to step into the minefield of cultural appropriation because that's too heavy of a topic for this campaign. This campaign, I definitely, it's gonna get heavy. It's gonna get emotional. But like, that topic is too sensitive for me to poke. <laughs> I know half citizens, if not the leading faction, they are like. So I like it. I like the idea that they're kind of sort of rivaling cultures become closer. Yeah, that that was my thought. I really like it that way. Get, you know, the, uh, the black diamond. Uh, they first of all. They ah, then the aqueduct happens. Toward aqueduct. Turn six, aqueduct, to harvest some of the glacier split water for the Leopard King's citizens. The, uh, but, uh, I'm gonna draw a nice little no, 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 curve tool. Where did I put the curve tool? The MS Paint Wizard. That's way to say that. MS Paint Wizard. Yeah, Aqueduct located, <laughs> says past Green Rex. <laughs> he, uh, he, he let his character have a kept you waiting, huh, moment. I... Sir yoinking the water out of the glacier which is patently sacred to the black diamonds 
time is difficult. Barris is still super cool. I agree. I I feel bad every time Barris is like half asleep during a session. I'm like, uh, 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 because as luck would have it, every time I have something planned for Barris, he's asleep. But every time I have, we've like stepped past the area where I have a thing planned for Barris, he's there. So I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Is the rest of this just me be... being excited about you guys' characters? Let me double check something super quick, because I wrote- I have timestamps. It's super duper sad. I hope that luck goes to our side in that regard. I agree. So, like, as I post the VODs to my YouTube, um, I have been- where did I put my tabletop RPGs? There we are. Um, as I've been posting these VODs to YouTube now, I've been splitting, like, YouTube has a feature where you can, like, type timestamps in the description, and it'll set it up and split it up into sections. Don't play the video. Don't play the video. Thank you. Don't ruin my watch time. Thank you very much. Just load the description. That's all I need. Any day now. There we go. Uh, okay, so I can skip forward a little bit because I just get super excited about the campaign for a little bit there. Wait, one more turn of Ah, uh, one more turn of X now. Okay. So what was our last turn um, here? Um, gambling increases. We, we ah, know. the gambling. I get the sense that the Leopard King's, uh... So the gambling was the last thing we did in the timeline. The gambling was the little um, the little dollar sign there. Turn seven. Did I decide that they play a trick taking game like Hanafuda or or Euchre Seasons or Kanasta? Are the gambling type? This is a Roll up a ways. Do, 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 do. True green uh, dollar sign gambling, gambling everywhere. Exactly. We're gonna play. mostly just play for the thrill. Hang on. They gamble with uh, card games. They brought some corner. Of... I think Canasta. I might be they, misremembering. They, they, they... Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think. Uh... I kind of want to decide mechanically what card game is occurring, like, later, like, when y'all show up kind of thing to pull back the curtain a little bit, but I, I'm i leaning towards a trick-taking game like Euchre, or Kanasta, or Hanafuda, which, by the way, the game I've been calling Hanafuda is technically called Koi Koi. There are multiple games that you can play with Hanafuda cards. Um, the one that we've played in the 51 Clubhouse game streams is called Koi Koi. There's also uh, a game that you can play with Hanafuda cards originating from South Korea. There's one from Hawaii as well. I don't know either of those. I'll pick them up eventually. I should also probably double check my terminology. They mostly but, just play you know. for the thrill of it, you know. Yeah, like they play for the fun. The equivalent would be like playing playing poker for pennies with your family but you know it, it, some of it's very serious very intense gambling some people you know gamble for uh how yeah there's like gambling of all s they play and it's varying levels of serious they both play for fun, or the bets don't matter, or are removed outright. And play in serious situations where the stakes are really high at the house type things. Okay. Much. And 
uh, it all sounds like the cat's whisker. Oh, that's a terrible <laughs> pun past me. I love it. Okay, so that's that's our notes. We've gotten... Oh, I don't remember how many turns we have. So we've made seven turns. Um... How many turns did we start out with? I think 16. Welcome. We say Don't you welcome me past I'm me. I'm not sure. But that section of the map is just completely voided out. Check to see if you typed in the chat. That's that's what it I'm is, doing right now. It is not desert. It is MS Paint. These hills. Yeah. This location table. Locations. Uh, town starts. <laughs> okay. Need for attention. Six. Oh, yeah. sixteen probably was what we started with. And how many citizens was this? Thirteen lines means eighteen citizens. So, so there was eighteen citizens to start. Eighteen citizens. It's older than the town that it's hungry, but he so we insists started with fourteen turns. So we got halfway through. Yeah. You do. So we started with 14 turns. We have seven turns left. Seven turns left. And we have how many citizens left? So just counting these two here, because they, they're starting tokens. This one and this one don't count. We had we started with 16 citizens. We don't need to use every citizen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we've used six citizens, so we have ten citizens left. Citizens left. The fun thing about Ex Novo is if you don't use all your citizens in the course of playing your historical event turns, uh, you can then fill out the map by plonking down more citizens and more in more places on the map. Oh, you'll have to excuse any weird mouth sounds I make while drinking this water. It's flavored, and I don't usually have flavored water. So I'm entirely unused to it. Okay, so now I need to reopen the rules for Ex Novo, and we can actually start playing Ex Novo again. But this technically counts as playing Ex Novo, because I needed to take notes. This isn't the right tabletop RPG. This one is... Let's, uh, I think we just need to open the tables. Yeah, we really only need the tables. Uh, because we're just rolling on the event tables over and over. So once my table's open here, we can get started. Proper. Hello, tables. Are tables do open? There we go. It didn't actually start opening them. Computers are good at things sometimes. I'm gonna. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna open my like stream, like management thing on my uh phone just to keep an eye on things. Okay. Uh. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's good. All right, so obviously we need to roll on the events table because that's the portion of the game we're in. That's the lengthy portion of the game. We've already rolled for all the other things like factions and locations and stuff. Just events is left. Roll, roll, roll. Uh, six, three, six is what I just rolled. So we'll search that out, 636. What does that mean? The land opens up. Uh, the land stretches and opens up. A sinkhole forms, a trench opens, a mountain pass is formed. What falls in or crawls out? I mean, we already had a land feature happen with the glacier opening up. Um, hmm. Well, we could add a land feature. Um, 
I think what I want to do is add a land, if we're adding a land feature and I'm not just going to re-roll, I want to add a land feature up by this uh, Taiga area with the trees. The glacier could open further and call, cause an avalanche or I could re-roll. I could do that. Um, but I definitely, if I want something to happen, I want it to happen over here by this Taiga area with the trees. Um, but I don't know that I want that to happen. Let's, let's re-roll and see what we get. There's some fun concepts there, but I don't think I want to play with them. 256 is the what we just rolled. Let's try that. 256. Is that a good roll? Effective propaganda. A faction spreads their agenda be via pamphlets, posters, and rumors. What or who, that it, who do they discredit and why? Obviously, I think just broadly, the Snow Leopard people... Uh, are more likely to discredit. I think that they gain in power. I don't think they even discredit anyone on the continent. I think uh, this is the seed of discontent being planted about them being a colony of the Leopard King. I think it takes them a long time to be like, all right, okay, we've established ourselves here. We've learned how to live here thanks to the people that were already here. We don't need to be a colony anymore. <laughs> And the effective propaganda that obviously it spring could the factions from outs could factions from outside this town affect this one? I don't think mechanically in ex novo you're supposed to, but I am saying that functionally in the world at large, um, the Leopard Kings this this uh. A revolution starts, and they recognize that they've diverged from the Leopard King's rule enough that they can get on their own, and they change their name to the Society of the Snow Leopard. Become the Society of... The snowy, yeah, the snow, a uh, snow bitten leopard. As they break off from their f now former monarch. It's a whole drawn out thing. And there's still lingering and there's even in the present some lingering propagandizing against the leopard kings realm they didn't like being a colony after all So how are we going to re represent this? I think they expand. Uh, let's pick the right brush for the road, first of all. They expand. Can I still use my trackpad? It hasn't been working the other, the last couple days. If not, I'm going to have to struggle to do this with a, with like a with the trackball that I have attached to the computer. Um, ah, someone dis- it, it, it got dis disabled, turned off for some reason. Okay, I don't know why it did that, but that's fine. Anyway, we're gonna have them expand this away. I know I said I want them to get up to this area, but that's that's a small district. Actually, you know what? We have plenty of citizen tokens, so I'm going to let them expand in two places. Oh, we got to select and copy paste the the crown again. We're leaving their um we're leaving their symbol as a crown on this map, but 
know that mention of the Leopard King would not go over well. Like, mention of the area as the realm of the Leopard King or something along that line would not go well. So we add two citizens. Did I write in chat how many citizens we have? I really hope I did. Because otherwise I'm going to have to count again, and number's hard. Ah, ten citizens left. So that makes eight citizens. So now we have eight citizens. And six turns. Math hard. Numbers hard. Um, so that's that's this turn. They uh, they didn't like being a colony, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of propagandizing amongst the people. Uh, re representing the uh, the society like the the snow leopard or not the leopard the leopard king's uh, subjects as people who want to you know they're very aggrandizing they're very um, willing to benefit off the work of others all very negative stuff. Let me note that down. All right, let's see what we roll for turn nine. Three D6s, four, four, one. And if I don't like 441, I'm doing 414. <laughs> or 144. Anyway, let's see what we get out of 441. 441 is hygiene gains in importance. People start washing their hands. Public fountains become popular as do sewer systems. Who helps keep the city clean? Hmm. So what, what's, what, why are they so enthused about sanitation? Maybe they're what? Oh, oh, this could be spicy. Um, the oddly tropical for this year. Oddly topical for this year. I agree. Um, well, uh, the aqueduct. Something starts growing in the aqueduct. Is it? Is it fungus? Is it moss? Is it some kind of weird outlandish creature? We don't know what it is. Whatever it is, everyone who drinks from the aqueduct, i.e. not the Black Diamond, uh, they, they get sick, basically. I'm tempted, like, I know I said I want this area to be lower magic than Karsis, but this, th in this it makes sense for it to be a sort of magic sickness. Um, I think that this, uh, this disease called, uh, what's the thing that you yeet back and forth on a loom? Is that the, um, is that the travel? Is that what it's called? Hang on. Loom back and forth thing. Uh, a loom, because, ah, the shuttle, there it is, uh, it's called the shuttle, maybe because of something inside the glacier since the water comes from there, exactly. My thought was, okay, so this, um, this microbe, we're not going to determine what it actually, you know, what kind of microbe it is, because that's not a fun detail, but, uh, shuttleman's disease, I'm, I'm calling it that, shuttleman's disease uh, in the set it's called shuttleman's disease because it interferes with your access to the weave which is the weave is like a concept that I'm definitely stealing from Wizards of the Coast here but I'm playing D&D &D, so it's allowed um, the weave is like the like an electromagnetic field but for magic <laughs> Um, it's, it's probably a 
com it's probably a pretty common fantasy concept, so I'm not going to have anybody breathing down my neck for stealing it. Um, Shuttleman's disease uh, essentially interferes with your ability to interact with the weave. It's not inherently deadly, but if you depend on some kind if of any kind of arcane assistance, uh, then it immediately becomes very deadly to you. Like, any assistive aids, like mag magic-powered prosthetic hands, or captioning rings, or, um... You know, things of that like. Or, like, even simple magic items. You know, magic items that aren't vital to someone's life. A simple magic item, like a self-threading needle, or something as nebulous as a health potion. Like, health potions are obviously going to be a cornerstone of medicine in... <laughs> in any society that has any access to magic. So... When someone comes in with Shuttleman's disease, uh, they try to give him a health potion, and it does nothing. It does nothing at all. Zero percent of any things, because their connection with the weave is intermittent at best. And even if you are not the one casting, um, arcane energy cannot affect you if you're not in touch with the weave, because it's, it's the field that drives magic <laughs> in the same way that if you were to somehow disconnect yourself from electromagnetism you would no longer be able to uh you wouldn't be able to you know do anything magnetic and your brain would stop working so like that's the concept it's not inherently deadly by itself but in any situation that magic is important uh, it immediately, immediately becomes very deadly. It's Raz! Hello, Raz! Welcome! We're talking about, we're doing campaign planning. Uh, you've, you've walked into me discussing a fictional disease that breaks out on this continent and thankfully has not reached Carsus yet. It's not, yeah, but it's it, it's not that bad if you're not a caster until you need magical assistance and magic doesn't work on you. Uh, other places may call it Mistara's Blindness, or Mistra. I, I may have just mispronounced the name of my own uh, chosen deity of magic. Let me double check the pronunciation here. Figured you'd pop in between classes. Oh yeah, you're like a splode of several classes today, aren't you? You have like the one class and then the really lengthy lab. That's always an adventure. Let me look at the world building channel in the Discord for this group because that's where I wrote down this thing. Ah, Mistara, the goddess of magic. Uh, despite not being uh, a common uh, deity of worship in areas outside of Karsus. Uh, she still holds power over the weave everywhere. Uh, she may go by a different name in other continents. She may have different aspects uh, in that way. In the, in the sense of Percy Jackson's Greek versus Roman deities. They, they lord over the same thing, but they're and they're technically separate people, but they're the same entity. It's it's fuzzy. Anyway. Also known as Mistara's Blindness. You gotta go downstairs and get food soon. Oh, foods are important. first arises here carried in the aqu aqueduct so it 
doesn't affect black diamond citizens in nearly as major of a way. The disease is rumored to have come from the splitting of the glacier. Uh, we'll put another citizen on the map here for the Black Diamond. Uh, because we stated that the the, uh, the tundra area is loosely inhabitable because of the ecological effects of the split in the glacier, I think we'll give them a... Ooh, I didn't mean to select there. I meant to use this. There we go. I meant to do this. We're going to give them a single... They, they obviously don't want to uh, encroach into this area too badly. It is very important to them, you know, in a, in a religious sense. So they, they don't want to go in there. They don't want to... They don't want to go in there too bad, but uh, gosh golly, they don't really have anywhere else to go. You know, they can't go up here because it seems like these people are going to expand that way. They don't want to have that happen to them. Uh, anyway, why this causes a landmark, um, the cicadas, yes, they do be scream. Um, you know what's funny is in the current like, I don't notice cicadas as... Didn't work. Color orange. Uh, I don't have a color command. I think you set your color with the little gear in chat. Does Moobot have a color command? Uh, if Moobot has a color command, I'm willing to uh, make that happen. I think it's a universal command. Let me uh, tell you what. Remind me after stream to look at that, and I will look at that. Um, why does this cause an? Uh, why does this cause a landmark? The. Uh, the Rangers of the Black Diamond, who previously did not really have a temple of any kind, they were like, "Yeah, the whole tundra is our worshipfulness area." Uh, they extend. Twitch Shield? Whose emote is that? Whose emote is that? Sir Shield? Tell me things. That's the fun thing about... Oh. Uh, if you... Uh, I think if you give your account two-factor authentication, you, um, get that emote? Oh, no, I should not have clicked that. Now my chat overlay. Yeah, if you enable two-factor two authentication on your... If you enable two-factor two authentication on your account, then you get that shield. Uh, anyway, the fun thing about the OBS having chat built in now... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy the, the shield, Green Rex. You just gotta enable two-factor authentication on your Twitch account, which... All it really needs is, like, whenever you log into Twitch, then it'll be like, Yeah, I'm sending a text to your phone to make sure you're you and not someone who stole your password. Yeah. Uh, okay, what was I saying? Oh, yes, this, um, the Uwu helmet. Excuse me, Uwu helmet? My, my account has two-factor authentication. Uwu helmet? What's it called? Uh, hype train emotes, unlocked emotes. Ah, here we are. The Uwu helmet, Sir Uwu. Okay, uh, guess what emote I didn't know existed. That's kind of cute. Don't mind me just writing stats for a cursed artifact based on this now. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, this le. In an attempt to appease the spirits of the glacier, the Black Diamond's rangers erect a temple of sorts. 
What does that temple look like? That's not a design decision I'm making, but we'll put a little shape in the map to remind everyone that yes, there is now a temple there. It's gonna go right here. It's this little four-pointed star. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I gotta be back. I gotta get foods. That's fair. Have good foods. We're gonna roll for the next turn. Five, five, five. Could not have rolled that if you paid me. Where were all these good rolls when we were playing yacht dice the other day? Five, five, five is a high, is higher density buildings, an architectural breakthrough, restrictive laws, or simply too many people. But the buildings grow taller and tighter. Are they stable or rickety? I think. Uh, increased density of buildings doesn't make sense for the black diamond because they are very they don't build uh, structures traditionally um, I don't know that's strange to say you know the part of the conceit of the city is they have uh, powerfully educated citizens on both factions but I I'm envisioning uh, the Black Diamond is very stereotypically rangery. They don't really... They're a little bit hunter-gathery, so to speak. Like, and they never really stepped past that very far. Like, they have... They have, like, sets of domiciles that are like, oh, if you're in this... If you're in this area, use this building. And building is kind of loose. Like, they didn't build it with any traditional building materials. It's all, like densely packed ice and formed snow and stuff which you know th that's part of the thing that uh the the leopard the snow leopard citizens uh kind of borrowed from the black diamond uh in that they can you know they're in a tundra environment and Midsummer is not going to do a lot to diminish uh, ice-based architecture. And so they're willing to, like, put non-load bear... Like, non... Not heavy parts of buildings, you know, into being ice and snow. But they also are like, well, we don't want our whole buildings to be ice and snow. So this is that step forward... They're kind of stepping away from like the outer edge, ed like the outsides of the buildings, you know, the the like outer rooms or like things that don't have a second floor on them, like perhaps a well, a greenhouse is a bad example, but you you get what I mean, type thing. Uh, if a if a house has some kind of dimensionality where it's like several rooms are just one floor and then there's a section of the house that has two floors the section of the house that is one floor is more likely to incorporate ice and snow because it doesn't have to hold up anything else on top of it. But they're kind of stepping away from that and building buildings taller out of more uh, tra what we would consider traditional materials. Uh, I know it said... Yeah, it said to increase the density of a district, which I guess means... Uh, we will, we'll take this biggest district here because it's the easiest to increase the density on and we'll just plop a couple citizen tokens down into it, I guess, and make it very dense. Uh, they're, they're, they're very enthused about, they're very enthused about living near the beach there. Like, obviously this town is not built as a port town, but, like, it has a thriving port section now. Uh, Moobot seems to be very, very enthused about my YouTube channel. Thank you, Moobot. Uh, what else have you... I think Moobot's only yelled about the Discord and the YouTube so far. Uh, there's like three or four other commands it should have said by now but okay so that's two less citizen tokens so we're down to six 
uh, citizen tokens. We do indeed have captions. Uh, I'm glad Mubot mentioned them. So we're down to six citizen tokens now. Citizens. And how many turns do we have left? We have six turns left, actually. <laughs> Of their port side district by not leaning as much on the uh, igloo like constructions of the black diamond locals. Excuse me. Is the people leaving for Triad being be included in this town's history is it minor enough to not be mentioned? I was hoping that we would roll something that would let me tie in um, people leaving for Triad. Like, next time there's some kind of hardship in a roll. And, I mean, we have six... Uh, now would be probably a good time because Triad was kind of a very short timeline as far as I remember and so now would be a good time to point out that Triad happens yeah one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. yeah so there were eight turns for Triad so now-ish would be a really good time so I'm kind of was it 500 years? Can't quite remember. Around 500 years. I'm... So I haven't decided on, like, how these... Like, these timelines fit into the main timeline because continents that are not Karsus have a different calendar for lore reasons. Um, I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit and manually pick some kind of hardship... Because uh, there is like a whole section of the of the of the tables about bad things happening. Economy. Where's the bad things one? There was like a whole bad things one. Politics events. There's some kind of disaster. Warfare. I mean, warfare would work. Did we ever say what they were fleeing from in Founding Triad? Environment is probably the big one that I was thinking of. I may be adding a zero. I'm not sure. Uh, did we ever say why the... We never established why they left tri Left. Uh. Dendron for Triad, but this is why. Uh, let's roll for an environment roll. So what that means is the six portion of the table. Uh, we just leave one of the d6s out, and then we'll roll these two and see what what um what disaster we get. Six six three is interesting times, an especially turbulent stretch of history. Is it a curse or a blessing, and is there a cause for this? Ooh, this is a fun. Uh, this is a fun roll on the table. I'm not sure. It may be just been because they got fed up with something. I like that. This is especially, especially on the nose. Then this was a good roll. So this is something. This is an effect that I've never seen. Uh, come up before. Uh, you roll for two events and combine them. Uh, another one that comes up in the 600 block of this table is space itself expands. The city increases its grip on the surrounding landscape. Why did that happen? Oh, if you roll 656, 
Uh, unexplained phenomena. Flickering lights in the sky, glowing bands in the woods, something strange is happening. What is it? Is it a good or bad omen? Change nothing. That's crazy. Um... Anyway, so we're going to roll for two events and combine them happening at once. What's our first event? 535. 535 means trouble with the food supply. So we have trouble with the food supply, trouble with the food. And 413, that, that's good or bad luck, depending on how you feel about Homestuck. A great fear. And a great fear. So what, what would cause both trouble with the food supply and a great fear at the same time? You know, we were talking about other cities affecting this city food supply blessing or curse a great fear mm. we were talking about other like factions from outside the city affecting factions within the city um i almost want to say that the um oh brain loading the the leopard king is like all right you've had your fun i need my colony back like i i don't know if i want to inject that kind of political intrigue but like that is an option here what what else could we use other than political intrigue oh i'm definitely going to have to take a break halfway through to like halfway through the stream to like get air get water i mean if they separate there'd surely be pushback yeah like the political intrigue is a very easy one to be like they lose their the counter revolution and so they're like well we're just going to go start our own town bye um, that's a very easy one. We also never resolved the elemental being released. That's true. Um, that could also be why this is happening. You never know. Oh, hmm. Do I want to go with the elemental being released? Or the... Well, either way, uh, what did I say? Trouble with the food supply. A great fear means a faction gains power. So I think a faction gains power would be the Black Diamond. Maybe because the half elves are getting closer to the glacier, it starts getting angry. I like that. I think that. But I also want it to come down on the snow leopards. Um, I think that for all we know, it could be both. That's true. Um, ooh, let's make this a historical event and, uh, uh, you know, more, more, th more of a thing, uh, more of a, like, magic fantasy thing. Um, the cold elemental feels spurned by the, uh, builders of the aqueduct, but the snow leopard people convince the cold elemental that the people across the sea their former rulers who are sending an invading navy force uh that the invading navy is the one who built the aqueduct and so the um the cold elemental just just destroys absolutely like decimates this navy and there is still like a large iceberg like tethered to that section of the continent where that navy was and people go uh 
goodbye. <laughs> they see that happen and they're like, I don't want to live here anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> so, let's see if we can put that on the map. We have a good, like, iceberg shape. I don't think we have a good iceberg shape. Can I just, like, draw a bunch of lines? I can. Okay. We're gonna draw, we're gonna, like, try and draw a little iceberg shape here. Frozen seas for years, a great cold messing with bull with the lives of those who rely on the sea. That's why it's a food shortage. Because, like, it freezes the bay that they're in for a very long time. So let's let's draw ourselves a couple of little, little, little lines here to kind of try and represent a large iceberg. I'm not an artist, by the way. There is a large iceberg. It is large, it is significant, and it scares many people. I'm gonna fix that so it's closed, and then we're gonna... Frozen Seas, yeah. So the Frozen Seas, uh, it's called, this event is called the Night of the Frozen Seas. I like that phrasing. Boop, 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 boop. And there's a boat in there, I promise. The cold elemental. Displeased with its home turf being treated disrespectfully. Hang on, library is scritch a scratching at the door. One moment. Let me just... What? Don't nobody love you, kitty? Huh? Yeah? Do you have words? Do you have words for Papa? Yeah. Mer. Come here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Papa wants to talk. Come here. Hi. Come up here. Come on. You can do it. You can come up here. He's like, uh, yeah, I can, but I don't know if I want it. There we go. Hi. Hello. It's library. He's here. I like to imagine what happened and how it looked like from a distance. Yeah, like you're just looking from the town as ships get like frozen over and like a giant mass of ice fills the bay. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, you were scratching at the door. He was like, Dad, your door is closed. Your door is never closed, Dad. Poor library cat. Nobody love him, do they? Oh, a chew. I hope you can hear him purring. Let me, let me just let me just hold him up to the mic. Oh, yeah. He's like, don't hold me up, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Nobody love you, huh? Okay. Let's keep let's keep pontificating about this idea. Uh, and people see this terrifying display of power, and they're like, I'm getting out of here. Why are they so culty? Nobody knows. It's just a side effect. It's the tra It's the generational trauma. They they accidentally all three of all three of the societies that started in Triad became culty because of because of generational trauma. <laughs> I'm only somewhat kidding. Yeah, library. Brush, brush, brush. Brush, you brush, you brush. Sorry, I'm very easily distracted, but we're still we're still planning. It's the fear. They find a sign of hope and it went downhill from there. Absolutely. Uh Let's actually write this down though. Okay, library. You're going to have to watch out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Type around the cat. Hi. 
Yeah, is the arm in your way? Oh, yeah. Are you coughing? Are you okay, baby? Are you good? That it wants to. I love the idea of the triad just being a mess of a town, but still holding together between the three factions. I also really love that. Troy, whoever was responsible for the aqueduct. Yeah. What do you think? How do you feel about Triad and Dendron, huh? He says, I don't know, Dad. I'm just a cat. Why are you asking me about world building? Yeah. Okay, kitty. That's enough being in the way. Come on over there. There we go. Get comfy, kitty cat. Dad, I'm just a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Snow leopards convince it that the incoming <clears throat> Recolonizing force from the from the Leopard King's domain are the ones who made the aqueduct, and that navy gets frozen in what seems to be a permanent iceberg. This terrifying display of power and the related famine as fishing becomes impossible for a while is what drives some citizens to go found triad. Okay. Uh, did it say remove things in particular? Uh, a great fear means the faction gains power, obviously, so... Famine. Food. Let's see what happens when we search food in the table. Trouble with the food supply. Uh, we remove a district and gain a district. So I think the district just on the map, this district nearest the um, nearest true guy, it just, it just essentially, for the purposes of Ex Novo, picks up this whole district, just picks up and leaves <laughs> and becomes Triad. So we will... Uh, repaint this in white could I just erase this absolutely am I going to no I'm just gonna do this I'm just gonna remove remove this district this district just picks up and leaves they're like bye we're triad now lol and we'll put a little road. Ooh, gross. There's little crumbs left. Let me fix that real fast. And we'll put a little road. Switching back to the... Yeah, we're bailing out. Goodbye. <laughs> we'll put a little road over here. And that extends to True Guy. This one here. And, uh... Uh, I, ironically, it also says a faction gains power, or like there's a landmark. So I think I think the Black Diamond being like, all right, dang, you uh, you managed to redirect the uh, the uh, apocalypse that was headed your way. Uh, we're gonna go continue living places, <laughs> and they decide to expand here. Shoot, doot.
Just cool, I live here. <laughs> uh, how many how many citizens does that leave us? Scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, I don't remember. I think that leaves us six citizens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's six citizens. We have five turns left, so. All right, turn 12. I imagine the BDs having a better relationship with the cold elemental would feel encouraged, and that's why they expand. They're like, yeah, we wanted you to get rid of the aqueduct too, but instead you like nuked that, uh, you nuked that navy that was probably going to cause us problems. Thank you anyway. All right, let's see what we roll for turn 12. Uh, four, six, four. What, just what is that one? Four, six, four. Is a new secret cult spreads? No! Cults again! Uh, are these philosophers preaching heresy or heretics preaching bloody revolt? How, how does the cult recruit? Where? So we add a faction, or a faction gains power. Cults everywhere. Why is this the cult continent? Um, yeah, cults, cults everywhere. Um, what's the cult? Uh, I think, I think, I think there's a small cult just outright worshipping the cold elemental now. Uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, they're called the Boreans. Does that make any sense? Because uh, Boreas was a Greek, a minor Greek uh, deity that was the North Wind. Does it make any sense for that to be an etymological name here? Yeah, absolutely not. Am I making it a thing here anyway, even despite the lack of etymology? Yeah. Uh, the Boreans, spelled like that, who are less boring than you would expect, uh, they just kind of like move out into the tundra. <laughs> They're like, hi, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live way out here where no one can find me, and we're gonna be a cult, and we're gonna worship the, the, the ice ice demon that just destroyed our that area you were just in and they all and everybody else goes you stay over there <laughs> one two that is a six pointed star I, I actually instead of six pointed star I'm gonna just make a little snowflake shape it's not that bad one ooh not in that color I'm not One, two, three, four. That is not correct. Because, uh, you know, it'd be cool. A subrace of cold half drows developed from living so far into the glacier. I kind of like that. Is this a snowflake shape? This is kind of a snowflake shape. Hang on. I, oh, I don't have that saved anymore. I used to have saved a video. Uh, of someone doing like a nice little embroidery pattern. I might actually still have it saved, come to think. Scroll, scroll. Do I still have that saved or is that something else? I used to have like a nice little embroidery, like simple embroidery stitch thing that was... No, I think this is something else. Yeah, that's something else. Yeah, that, but that, that gets the point across. I don't know if I'm gonna make them like half drow or like what they are mechanically. But they are sure uh, snow people. Uh, I I know I know what subclass I'm gonna make them. I I think they go full druid. Uh, there's a circle of the snows druid I think, or like a like a polar soul sorcerer or something. A polar soul actually. Is there a cold? Is there like a? Is there like a? an elemental warlock 
Let me check if there's rules on that. Elemental Warlock. I mean, after, I said after I was in the sense that they went into a darker, or this case, way colder place. Yeah? I like that. Otherworldly patron, the elemental. That is... Uh, that is homebrew, and I don't know how balanced it is. Let me look here super quick over this. You've made a pact with an elemental. Uh, is this super busted? Uh, this doesn't, like, espouse elemental options for... Uh for cold elementals there's not all that many cold spells actually there's like snow like snowball swarm and ray of frost and like uh investiture of ice and a couple other ones it's, it's not abundantly i'm kind of tempted to make it like an elemental like i might i might wrangle um an elemental warlock or druid uh i i like the idea of warlock because this cold elemental is like a it's a whole entity. I, same, I love cold spells. There's a reason I made Kiernas, my first character, such a, um, like, he's, his whole shtick is, every spell of his is either, like, I'm making friends, or I am causing you inordinate numbers of frostbite damage. <laughs> like, his, one of his late game spells, if we ever wind up going back to that setting in that character. One of his late game spells is going to be Investiture of Ice. Um, Kiernas actually was uh, on a streamed game. If you want to learn about Kiernas, um, he exists. Let me link that super quick. Let me find that playlist and then link it. Should be here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, if you're watching it on the VOD, by the way, uh, rather than trying to type, uh, rather than trying to type out th the link from the chat display, uh, I have the playlist saved. But that's the playlist. I have the playlist saved on my channel. Um, it's from Raz's YouTube channel. But that's LGBT and D. Uh, like four people have stolen our branding since we stopped using it. Uh, there's Kiernas, my character. He's a dragonborn sorcerer. There is, um... Oh, hi, library. There's not library. Not yet. We didn't have this sweet boy at that time. Look at this boy. Um, Kiernas, dragonborn sorcerer. Yeah, hi. Hello. Hey. Look at Papa. Yeah. Bonk. You want a bonk? Yeah. It's a good name. I'm surpri unsurprised so many people used it. Yeah, like, I'm not too mad about it like we're not actively using it so i'm not upset if we were actively using the name and then someone took it i'd be a little more upset uh other than curious there is Razmatazic's character um ender moonwind uh she is a multi-class cleric wizard she's a great character uh there's matt hatter plays who i think he, if you keep an eye on my hosts you'll know uh, he played Zoggle, a half Goliath, or a half giant, uh, druid. I think he was, he was planning on switching to Circle of Spores, but, like, the lore reason for that happening didn't happen, so he's a Circle of the Moon druid. Um, who else was there? Oh, there was Azure, uh, who was a bard, uh, a stabby bard knife bard what's it called the school of uh school of knives or something school of whispers that's what it was um which is a really fun bard subclass by the way <laughs> um and last but not least for that group was uh kid infinite who in this house we hug bards it's true all of them i've told you all about millerus and great at great length um Kid Infinite was the dungeon master on that one, and he did fantastically, by the way. <laughs> I named my Animal Crossing Island, uh, Duver, after a city in his setting. 
Milrus in his smarm. Mm, yes, it's Milrus Dodson. Don't you know, darling, I'm the greatest bard to grace this plane or any other. Um. <laughs> oh, boys. Sorry, my boys are very upset that I've shut the door. Bud, you, Magnus, you know how to open doors. You could have done this, sir. Yeah, you could have opened the door. You know how to open doors. <laughs> um. Yeah, Magnus has figured out, like, if the door has not latched, or if the door has a very poor latch, he has figured out that if he shoves his paw under there, and then, like, yanks backward, he can open the door. <laughs> Yeah, he's too smart for his own good. If he ever figures out how doorknobs work, I genuinely genuinely will need to start baby-proofing things. <laughs> and I don't put it past him. Like, if it's, like, the, the like, handled doorknob instead of, like, a circular handle, it's, like, a little thump kind of doorknob, I would put money on him being able to open doors like that. <laughs> he's... He stole all of the brain cells. Anyway, now that we've gotten sidetracked into the first D&D game that I played, at this rate, Magnus will start making his own D&D characters. I won't spoil the thing I have planned, but you have hinted at a thing I have planned. <laughs> um, okay, my brain fell out. Where were we? Uh, oh yeah, the... The... Uh, ice cult. <laughs> the ice cult. Wander deep into the tundra and form a cult worshipping the cold elemental. They call themselves Boreans. That name might be subject to change, because I don't like that it doesn't have any uh, etymology here. Okay, turn 13 of 16. By the way, we have this turn and then three more. Two, three, six. Treason. Someone betrays the city or its leaders. What drives them? Are they successful or does the city make an example of them? I think. What? Who would be treasonous and why? I think there is. I think it's not a who but a what <laughs> I think that another outbreak of uh, another outbreak of Shuttleman's disease is uh, blamed on the Boreans and uh, because they're the ones who like you know obviously as people who worship the cold elemental they're not going to like the aqueduct duh and it's blamed on the Boreans, so rather than the Boreans gaining any citizens, they just still are hard hard line out there. But what does lose effectiveness is the um, is the aqueduct. The aqueduct is not completely sundered, but a little bit broken now. The aqueduct doesn't work as well. They live at the upper parts of the river, so they'd be the first people getting pointed at. Absolutely, they would. So we're gonna add a little. Uh, we're gonna add a little. Boreas colored, lightning bolt here. And this will signify that, the Boreans were were suspected of ruining the aqueduct. What actually happened? That's for me to keep a secret until we release the campaign setting, but I know why. Against the rest of the city. Uh, 
They're blamed for sabotaging the aqueduct that provides water from the glacier to the snow leopard people. Oh, zoot! Zeet zoot! My phone is buzzing. Hang on, let me fix my sound. So my phone doesn't do that. Well, I tried. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was writing down why they, uh... Why the, what actually happened. Okay. Next turn, turn 14 of 16. Yeah, like like I said, later I will go through and like assign dates to this. I have to decide on how uh, the other continents, if the other if each continent has their own timing system or like what. 1 Four, three is what I just rolled. So we'll see what that is on the table. One, four, three. That is enemy sabotage. Enemy forces enter the city and destroy or damage a resource. Who sent them? What's their agenda? Around what time would this be for True Guy? This is turn 14. They left in, in 10. So four turns in, uh, four turns into Triad, they would be, uh, there'd be people becoming upset with the Golden Koi's control. So I think in the process of splitting off and, uh, producing their own faction, some people just be like, some people are just, uh, in the mindset of, oh, well, uh, we can just go back to Dendron. <laughs> That's where we're from, remember? Ooh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. People just go, oh, well, well, we'll just come back, right? We can do that. That's where we're from. And, uh, I think this, uh, this extra, these extra citizens flooding back into the city puts too much strain on the aqueduct, and it entirely collapses the aqueduct is dead that's the resource that is removed here people fleeing triad in its early days to escape the stranglehold of the golden koi. Puts too much strain on the already damaged aqueduct and it collapses into uselessness. Rip aqueduct. They, uh, no more aqueducts. The Boreans rejoice. The Boreans are so excited about it. Like, the Boreans are part of why they don't rebuild it. Because they know if there was any effort mounted, that the crazies from the tundra would descend upon the town and cause Turbo Problem 64. Uh, the ruins of the aqueduct are actually they actually remain into the town into the current time period uh into the into the present so to speak 
So I'm just going to paint uh, in all the not the everything but the line. Yeah, everything but the lines of the aqueduct here to kind of symbolize that. Yeah, there's some there's some pieces here and there, but not a lot. I do kind of want to leave the Borean mark on it though. One moment, I accidentally painted paint bucketed that in. There we go. Let's try that again. Oh, I didn't want to paint in those lines. No. Oh, I'm struggling with MS Paint, everybody. The MS Paint struggle is real. There we go. So there's there the. the uh, Will there be any environmental effects due to them breaking down? I think so. Turbo problem 64 is a great thing you just made. I don't know how the, like, the phrase, like, I think that phrase inserted itself into my lexicon. It started out with, like, super problem, super problem brothers, and then it, it escalated to hyper problem brothers, and then it escalated to... S turbo problem brothers and then turbo problem and then like i instead of turbo problem brothers i wanted to go a step further into turbo problem 64 <laughs> and, and that's where it is right now maybe the more i say it it will eventually like uh advance to problem cube problem cube 128 or something i don't know but Turbo Problem 64 is a phrase that I use. Um, would the environment... Other than, like... I think this actually genuinely makes a river. Uh, like a river out to the sea. Because the water from this is like, Well, I need to go somewhere. You know, in a very... You know, you know water has that voice, right? <laughs> water sounds like this, right? <laughs> um... It kind of washes out these roads a little bit, and it makes a little river. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't flood any occupied districts, but it sure does come close. Kind of dunks on this whole road area. Uh, not that entire road, thank you. But there's a little river there now because the aqueduct isn't harvesting that water. That's a good point. I did not even... A forever evolving problem phrase. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of stuck. It's stuck at Turbo Problem 64. We'll see if it evolves further. But that's a good point. Like, that's something that uh, Ex Novo kind of presses. Like, remember to consider environmental effects. Ruins don't just become ruins. Uh, thank you for pointing that out. That's also something, that's also part of why I'm using Ex Novo, like, in public like this, so that people can insert their thoughts into the, into the process, so I don't just get ahead of myself and not consider things. But a little river happens. Yeah, when things happen, they don't happen in a vacuum. I like to look into those little details. Fair enough. Turn 15. Second to last turn. 5, 2, 4. A place for the dead. More people mean more graves or places of remembrance. What space does the city create for these funerary traditions? Add a landmark. What? If my laptop revives, I'll definitely be creating a large town for a setting I made a long time ago. Fair. So what what are these people's burial traditions? Hmm. I'm kind of into the idea of they like put the bodies somewhere that then nature kind of eats them. Uh, 
but that won't make for a good landmark. What would be what would be a good uh, burial landmark? Return them to whence they came. Exactly, that was kind of the idea. I think... Ooh. Okay, I have an idea. And stop me if you've heard where I'm borrowing this from. But instead of, like, burying people individually, they need to get the bodies out of especially such confined spaces as the towns as quickly as possible so they're just they're just moved to a barge that is then like that's the, that's the dead body barge and if you're really in need of money you work the dead body barge and they just have memorial parties for people's like parties in relative scale to the person's life and the body is not really considered a part of the uh part of the funerary process here they're just like yeah it's a body it can go be on the barge and get yote into the ocean except people don't really think about the yote into the ocean part they're just like yeah it's on the barge now bye As the town's density continues increase a new funerary they celebrate the life not mourn the death during their funerals absolutely Instead, focus on the life and memories of the deceased and parties are thrown in the scale of their life as a pun on scale that stuck people begin to call the body barge the uh oh I had something in my brain about scales and weight um Oh, what was in my, oh, uh, it was something with balance, like it was a, it was like a rift off of balance, um, scales, balance, I think it fell out of my head, um, let me Google balance to see what comes up, I think I was thinking balance keeper, but Let's see if there's any, um, uh, translate balance to Dutch. That's funny. I was looking up Dutch words, uh, or I was looking up Dutch things while I was reading Six of Crows the other day. Um, or maybe I had, like, sent somebody some stuff from Six of Crows and they were like, what's that influenced by? So I had to Google it to make sure it was Dutch. Uh, not Dutch but let's see if we can find a language that I will like here uh, I don't think I see a language I'm in adoring to, to yoink words from hang on balance uh Call the the tax man's. Uh, oh, what if this is like, this is where they get their, like he's a relatively recent deity, of the uh, end time, end of your life, and the party. 
Uh, Synonyms, pair of scales, set of scales, scales, weighing machine, weigh bridge, equilibrium. Uh, I like the scales of Quilibus. Quilibus, a deity associated with this, a relatively young slash new deity associated with this practice, becomes that odd to sided god that handles partying and death. He's a little bit like uh, Janus from Greece in that mind. You know, he's he's got one aspect that handles one thing and then another that handles another. He's I like the idea of him being two-headed. <laughs> and one head's a party animal and one head is uh, very um, very somber. Reflected in his depictions with two heads. Much like, uh, because D&D has clerics and clerics actually get to, like, cast spells and stuff, uh, Obviously, at the start of this tradition, uh, Quilius is not, um, Quilibus is not, like, he does not lend clerics very much power, or he does not have very, very many clerics, so they don't have a lot of power between them. By the way, that's how you spell that. Um, but by the present time, he's building a little bit more of a following. Speaking of the present time, what's the most recent historical event? Six, two, four, say the dice. Beneficial weather. Oh, we already uh, we already kind of did beneficial weather. What about six, four, two? Uh, nature thrives, abundant growth. Force, eh, I don't like nature thrives either. What about 426? A shift in cultural values. Um, maybe. Let's see what 246 or 462 is. 462 is a prophet appears. I think that... That would work. That would work really well. Um, that would work really well with the rise of Quilibus here. Um, I think a prophet of Quilibus, uh, a herald, if you will, uh, arises. And uh, he kind of... He suggests that the barge be not only Quilib... Quilib be not not the only refuge for Quilibus here. Uh, first of all, let's put a little bow at shape. Uh, we're not getting a boat shape. We're putting a little... I mean, it's a barge, so it's lengthy and rectangular anyway. So, we'll, we'll change the color of this. Uh, let's go with... Uh, let's go with this orange for Quilibus. That's that's the Quilibus barge. Uh, let's put some small lines across it while we're at it in a lighter color. And that's the Quilibus barge. Once we put lines on it, is there like a skull shape that I can put on here? 
Obviously, I've vastly overestimated the size of this barge here, but the scales of Quilibus, there they are. And my vast artistic skill in rendering. Um, and the Herald of Quilibus uh, suggests that, hey, uh, so maybe we should have like a dance hall or something you know like we should have an area where these funerals take place so we don't just like bop people's houses with these big uh funeral parties and so this uh previously empty district uh for e uh you know that triad picked up and walked off with uh, reestablishes itself, and uh, I think this is just a new, uh, new faction. This is the worshippers of Quilibus. Uh, there's not a skull shape, so let's use a down arrow in gray, because you know down in the earth, and uh, Sure. The Herald of Quilibus gains followers. Sure. It's easy to support a party god. But the thought of your children's children remembering you fondly because you knew the right people to get your memory preserved sure helps too the main district of Quilibus has equal parts historical or yeah genealogical libraries actually genealogical and what amount to party buildings slash dance halls for the event for for the funeral parties of all shapes and sizes okay uh now we have we need to have 16 total citizens on the map uh, how many citizens do we have on the map right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have three more citizens to place. I think we were carrying on about the uh, leopard part of the da, 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 the leopard part of the city being very dense. What's still on my pace? Oh no, didn't want to paste that text. I wanted to. Select the crown and make these areas a little more dense. So we still have three more, so we'll put one more here. I think we have one more citizen token. Correct me if I'm incorrect. But I think I want to give Quilibus here another... Uh, Another citizen. What's interesting about Ex Novo, it's not really is got Omega distracted by my little brother after you mentioned downward arrows for underground. What did I miss? 
Um, what did you miss? Uh, we were talking about how if you don't use all your citizen tokens in Ex Novo, uh, you have a final turn where it's like, all right, well, I want these districts to be more populated or I want this faction to have more power, so I'm going to use my extra citizen tokens to give these factions more power, these districts more more population. So we're, uh, we're increasing the population of some of the districts to make them feel more dense. Um, essentially, the uh, Herald of Quilibus, uh, who is the for lack of a better term, the her the head of the Church of Quilibus, uh, gains a lot of followers, not only because it's a party god and that's easy to... Uh, yeah, a little bit like a free range, I guess. Like, for the citizen thing. Um, not only because it's easy to support a party god, but because you... Uh, this, this focus on your funeral being a remembrance of your life rather than being sad that you died, people get a lot more focused on like how will I be remembered it's important that people remember me as a good person and so uh, buddying up with people in the church of Quilibus uh, is seen as a good way to do that uh, the, the Quilibus district which is going to have a different name by the time you all get there um, is going to have uh, a lot of like party area like basically you know like to use an antiquated term, dance halls, and uh, and then like a lot of genealogical libraries. Like if you, you know, you need to know what your family history looks like, it is most likely preserved in these genealogical libraries because along the line somewhere, someone went, well, we're remembering the life of a single person, so like we need to remember who's remembering them, and it just spiraled into like. Oh geez, we need to keep track of everyone's family lines. Like, granted, there's like gaps in the information because this is a relatively relatively recent phenomena in comparison to the history of the whole city. But like, there's definitely plenty of people who kept track anyway, and they just kind of like donated their records to the library. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of. Uh, there is a symmetry between Anchime and uh, other continents, or like there is a symmetry between Karsus and other continents in that there are one or two, ma like with enough time, there's massive libraries of these people's lineages. That yeah, yeah, like if we skipped a long way past the present, if we went to the far future of this setting, there'd be you know vast, massive libraries. There's already like small to large size libraries anyway currently even within the short amount of time there um but i like the idea of anchime being paralleled by other intellectual cities in uh you know true guy and the other continents and there's like one or two very intellectual cities but anyway that's uh that's dendron uh, we, we, we did it. Uh, I'll need to decide on, like, a timeline, like, how these individual turns, uh, fit into the overall chronology of the world. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Uh, let's... Uh, what time is it? It's only 8 o'clock. I can go until 10, so I have another hour. I think what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to save this map. Uh, we're going to close paint. I'm going to make sure that's saved, because if it didn't, then I'm going to have to go run and get it from the, uh, from the VOD, but that's not the end of the world. Dendron. Dendron. There we go. It would be sad if it didn't save. Well, thankfully, it was on screen there for a while, so I can still, like, 
screenshot it. Oh no, it's saved. We're good. So now I, c I can go back in, um, in Incarnate and fancy up that map, but I don't really want to do that on the stream. Uh, it's, it's bad enough for y'all to have to suffer through my inability to wrangle MS Paint. Uh, hmm. Oh, shoot, I didn't grab, uh, Uno cards, or we could do the, um, that's, we could do the, the, uh, Gateshead engine. I honestly have fun watching you wrangle MS Paint. Fair enough. So I'm going to remove the the crop from this page and we're going to look at the rest of the continent. So as you can see, uh, I tried to have that kind of, these triangles are supposed to be major cities and uh, these continents are all, you know, noticeably larger than, uh, than Carsis. So like some of them have uh, information hubs, two information hubs on the large continents. Like this, uh, the one on the right has two information hubs. The one in the middle has two information hubs. And then True Guy up at the top and the one in the, in between the other, la the larger continents there has one information hub. So I kind of like that idea of there being that sort of symmetry between Carsus having one major nexus of information and there being other nexi of informations on the uh, on the planet slash plane I'm glad you like watching me wrangle MS Paint uh, I I don't know if I can find a way that is satisfactory to um, capture my struggling with incarnate maybe but i i don't know uh let me look through my because i know i have single player rpgs that would take us you know an hour and that'd be it i'm kind of tempted to play the you think with so much magic and ant time they'd be connected magically with those cities i've considered that you know that is one way for you all to get from Carsis to true guy or Carsis to other continents is, you know, there could be teleportation circles. But I think those areas being so much lower magic, you know, teleportation circles might be out of their reach. Uh, where are my single player games? You know what? Uh, rather than playing a tabletop RPG, uh, let's play a tabletop game called Matrix Overload. It's really fun. Um, it's a, it's essentially like a solitaire, like cyberpunk solitaire. I'll tell you about it after the break. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab some water, rest my throat a little bit, and we'll be back with some, uh, with some, I think it's called Matrix Overload. Matrix Overload is what it's called. Uh, e auto mod caught you. Um, I'll allow it for now. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, break time. Uh, we'll be back with Matrix Overload here in a little bit, because I still have an hour left to stream. I'm going to grab some water and rest my throat. Not starting soon. Be right back. There we go. Be right back. Uh, I'm going to put on some funky, funky fun, royalty-free music to fill air while I'm gone. Wait, auto mod? I said Hecate myself. Uh, I think I think rather than Hecate, it was badass that that auto mod got upset about because my auto mod's really, really picky. Hang on, is this? What are these songs? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, let's play these ones, and I'll hit play. All right, music's happening. Don't, uh, don't cause too much problems in the chat while I'm gone. I'll be back.
All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, so we are going to switch over to the IRL stream camera. Hello, here I am. It's the rest of my body, it's on camera. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna play, we're gonna play Matrix Overload is what it's called. And it's basically Cyberpunk Solitaire, and I really like it. I was planning on streaming this when I had a better way to capture the table. I do not have a better way to capture the table. So the idea is the storyline, so to speak, for this tabletop RPG is you are a hacker hacking the grid to stop um, corporate overlords from causing problems on purpose as they do in um, every cyberpunk story ever. And uh, your grid is a three by three of cards, um, which I hope you'll be able to see, or if not, I'll be showing the cards to the camera as the grid builds um, and explaining it to hopefully help you keep track of it. Uh, I might even like pick up my laptop and be like, hey, this is the grid. Uh, and the idea is you're hacking into the grid to stop these corporate overlords. Uh, they're, they're called kings, queens, and jacks, uh, respectively, because it's a deck of playing cards. And the rules essentially amount to the two cards nearest, uh, I can't remember if it's the row or the two cards nearest the, uh, the face card that is on the edge of the three by three, uh, need to add up to a certain number. Uh, okay. So we'll start with a shuffle deck of playing cards that include jokers. Uh, we draw the cards one by one and lay them in a face face up in a three by three grid skipping the center position if you draw any face cards when laying out the matrix put them face down in a separate pile and keep drawing until you've made the grid without any face cards so we draw our first card and it's the four parts so we put it up here draw our next card it's the nine of spades so we put it here next card four of spades also if you're curious about shuffling i shuffled these seven times before i after i was done using these last the ten of hearts the ace of spades uh, can you see the you can sort of see the grid uh the three of spades so you can get a rough idea of what's going on here i need to move these upward a little bit so they're not as much of an issue later because you have to put cards here here and here and here here and here but that's difficult when you don't have as much desk space eventually i hope to acquire a spare webcam so i can have a nice table camera to play these table games um the five of diamonds and oof, there's the, there's one of our face cards there's two of our face cards. Okay, and then a joker. That's kind of bad luck uh, to have it on the board so early, but oh well. Uh, but we'll, we'll, you'll see why in figuring out the rules. Um, so the grid, you want to place, when building the grid and you have a face card, you want to place the face card the highest number of its suit closest to it. So this nine of spades now has this king of spades above it, and that's what we're gonna. That's one of our targets. This king of clubs would normally go to whichever clubs is. Is that good if we get the face cards? Mm, we need to get rid of all the face cards uh, to win the game. Uh, whether it is good to start with more face cards or not, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't played a lot of this. So normally you would place this king of clubs uh, nearest to the largest club, but uh, there's no clubs on the board. So I could put it either near, nearest to this joker or nearest to the highest card of the same color, which would be four. So I'm gonna put it up here with the four. 
and the kings get to hang out up there. Uh, yeah. That means placing the royal next to the highest value card of the same suit. If none of the cards in, in the matrix match the royal suit, then place it next to highest value card of the same color. Yep. And if the colors don't match, it's just the highest number. Uh, if the card is a royal, it's one of the targets of your epic hack. It must be placed using the placement rule above. Uh, if your cards are 2 through 10, uh, these are cards we draw to take actions against the kings and queens. Uh, it's one of the programs in your epic hack. Ooh. Uh, the reset cards are the aces and the jokers. Aces are a soft reset. You play an ace on any stack of cards to reset it and add it to the bottom of the deck. They have one point uh, for math later. And jokers are hard reset, meaning they reset the highest thing on the table. Oh, no, wait. I have that backwards. You play a joker on the stack that has the lowest value showing on the top card, so it's more of a problem for you. So as you play, you need to place programs on a number smaller than them. So as you play, it's harder to play lower cards without the resets. Uh, when you place a card in the matrix opposite a royal, so that there are two cards in a row between the stack where you placed a card and the royal, those two cards become an overload of malicious code that you're firing at the royal through the matrix. So if I were to say, uh, I'm gonna draw a card, I'm gonna grab a card out of the middle of the deck so it doesn't cause us problems. So say I draw this eight of spades, right? I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the deck when we're done. Um, I could put it here in the middle of the deck and it would deal enough damage to get rid of this king because kings take 13 damage. So the two cards have to add up to 13 to get rid of a king. Um, however, uh, and queens have 12 and jacks have 11. However, if you draw a card you can't place, like if, if there was, if for some reason the board was all nines like nines and tens that's not possible but let's say it is then you put it behind the card that matches the royal that matches it closest so this is the eight of spades so it would go behind the king of spades and the king of spades gets that much more health that's one of the lose conditions if one of your royals gets too much health that it is feasibly impossible to kill them um the thing is, kings and queens do not just have more health. They also have more specific win conditions. Jacks, you can just do it with any number. Queens, color matters. And kings, color and suit matters. Um, I'm not explaining these rules as well as the rules are, but that's what you get. <laughs> Um, resetting a stack with an ace or a joker also triggers an overload in that line. So anytime you place a card and there are two cards, it triggers an overload. So like when we place that eight of spades here, <laughs> the cats are trying to open the door. You can do it. Don't look at me like that, Magnus. There you go. You, you open the door. Goodbye. Um, I'm getting a rough understanding. So like when we place that eight of spades here, it triggered an overload in this direction, but it also triggered an overload in this direction and this direction and this direction. So in the same way, if we were to draw an ace and reset a stack, it triggers an overload in every direction. Now, theoretically, if you leave the center spot empty, you could play a royal in the middle but it's not a good idea <laughs> because, you know, you have to get two cards in a row. Like, it, it would become unviral upon. Like, you would have to play one card that would get rid of it, which kind of is impossible. So anyway, <laughs> it's technically allowed, but it will end your game. Um, the two end goals, like, the two ways to end the game is the Royals get two powerful and you can't kill them and you lose and they come yank you out of your haptic chair and you can't access the matrix anymore and you disappear um the other win condition is you get rid of all the royals um 
like, then that's an actual win condition. Like, you did it. You did enough sick cyberpunk hacks to change the world. That doesn't make the table any more viewable. Okay. Um, and the th and the draw condition is if you're stuck in a loop of playing uh, the reset cards. Like, you play a reset card, and then, like, the cards that get put back in the deck just continue to make you play more reset cards. And if, it, if you get caught in an obvious loop, then quite literally uh, you are lost in a loop in the matrix so anyway with the basics of the game explained let's play so our current board if you can't see it very well is we have two royals the king of spades in space two zero to use like array numbering and the king of clubs in space three zero Wait, no, I might have those backwards. Uh, but you know what I mean, you know. One, two, three, zero. <laughs> and uh, then from left to right, and then reading down, we have a four of hearts, a nine of spades, a four of spades, the ten of hearts, a blank space, which we can play any card in, the ace of spades, then the three of spades, the five of diamonds, and the black joker. The color of the joker doesn't matter, but oh well. What do you think, library? Are you bonking the webcam? He says, yeah, I'm going to shake the whole stream, dad. Anyway, let's draw cards. Let's hack. Our first card is the nine of clubs. I'm going to play it. Uh, Okay, so I have two options here. I could play the nine of clubs in the middle of the board and immediately, well, no, it wouldn't get rid of the, the king of spades. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play it on, now normally I wouldn't play it on such a low value card as the four, but that opens up a lot of options to get rid of the king of clubs. So I'm going to play it on the four because that escalates the, that escalates the table less than playing it on the ace of spades. So then we check our overloads. Uh, the only overload that would have any effect is the king of clubs. Uh, we don't have enough points to get rid of the king of clubs, and are they not in... Does it have to take an exact amount of damage? It, 13 or more for kings. To kill a king, all cards in the overload must match the suit of the king. Uh, in the lore of the game, this means the richest of the rich. Um, you know, 0-1% type people uh the queens have 12 health they must match color library wants to inspect the cards don't you baby um and these are you know billionaires but not 0.01 percent in a cyberpunk setting and the jacks are just numbers so we draw our next card which is the seven of hearts i'm gonna play this uh in the only place i can uh, on the, because hmm, I can't play it on either of the nines, I can't play it on the ten, but I want to escalate the board as little as possible, so I'm going to play it, you know what, I'm going to play in the center, of the, no, playing it in the center of the board escalates it much more than placing it on top of this five of diamonds, so I'm placing it on the top of the five of diamonds. Ooh, our next card is the queen of hearts, if that's not clear, so that means it goes next to this ten of hearts here. Uh, it should be relatively easy to get rid of. We just need a diamond or a heart of at least value 2, and then we just slap it in the middle of the table, and that's that. Uh, the 3 of clubs, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 is not enough to get rid of the king of clubs, <clears throat> which makes me very hesitant. Uh, I can only play it to the center of the table on this 3 of spades, on the ace of spades or on the joker because the jokers don't have value and the ace is a one i'm gonna play it on the three of spades just to not escalate the board at all our next card is the six of six of spades nine plus six is 15 which gets rid of that king so even though it escalates the board i'm getting rid of that royal that is one royal down. Uh, it would f 
trigger a matrix overload to the left here, but it doesn't work because that's not the right color. Color matters for queens. Triggers a matrix overload right, doesn't do anything. Triggers a matrix overload down, doesn't do anything. Does it, Viper? Yeah. Roll down. <laughs> Hang on, I have sound effects. Oh, my, um, my system sound just isn't even... Never mind, I have sound effects, but my system sound isn't captured in the IRL streams. If I had a stream deck, here is where I'd push a button. I'm thinking about actually making this into a like a, a computer right a computer game, cause it's cause it's cool. It's actually really fun. Our next card is the Queen of Clubs. I was really shocked at how fun this was, by the way. Uh, according to the Royal Rules TM, we place it next to the Nine of Clubs, because that's the highest card that suits it. Uh, does placing a Royal cause a Matrix Overload? Uh, resetting an act stack with an ace or joker triggers an overload. Uh, placing a card opposite the royal. It would be awesome to play. I agree. So if we can get a matrix overload to trigger rightward here, we can get rid of this queen. I think, I think, don't, I may be reading the rules wrong. Uh, if I put the right card to get rid of this king royal here it also triggers a matrix overload in this direction and gets rid of the queen so we'll see uh the six of hearts uh that's enough to get rid of this queen here and if i place it on top of the six of spades that will uh so i think matrix overloads are only the cards adjacent you know so like if i were to place it here it would trigger a matrix overload up, down, left, right. And in the previous, you know, thing that I was saying, it would trigger matrix overload up, down, left, right. So like here, it wouldn't trigger this matrix overload to get rid of the queen, but it is triggering the matrix overload to get rid of this queen. So goodbye. Royal defeated. Uh, our next card is the five of spades, which is Mm, which is not the best card for us right now. We can either play it... Okay, if we play it onto the Four of Hearts, it only escalates the board one tick, and it gets rid of the Queen of Clubs. If we play it on... Yeah, that... Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm doing. Uh, royal down. Three royals down. Our next card is the Nine of Diamonds. I wish I had drawn this while there was more royals on the board. Gosh dang. Um, I'm going to play it here on the Nine of Spades to not escalate the board. Um, gotta have those sound effects. Yeah. Uh, next card is the Three of Diamonds. We're getting very close to firing some ice here. Uh, place the Three of Diamonds on the only card that doesn't take the board further uh, the seven of clubs the seven of clubs is enough to get rid of the king of clubs is enough but do we want to escalate the board in that way that that ticks up that part of the board seven times to six times i think i want to get rid of the king of clubs more than i'm concerned about ticking up the board six times because there are still an a there are still three aces in the deck for soft resets and there are still there is still another joker in there for hard resets so i'm willing to gamble this early and play the seven of clubs to <laughs> shut down that royal king of clubs dispatched i like that we have uh two kings and two queens out of the way immediately that bodes well knock on wood our next card is the eight of clubs uh i only have one card to place this on and it's right here so yeah because there's no eights on the board i can't place it on the nines can't place it on the tens so i'm placing it on the seven that has the ace under it uh to make it more i assume you can't play like a five on top of a six but yes a six on top of a five exactly you can only play escalating you got to meet or beat the card to play it 
Next card's the Six of Diamonds, which we just barely can place on this Five of Spades. Uh, I'm not sure what happens if you have a card that's ice, you know, that you can't play, but you don't have any royals on the board. Uh, the Five of Hearts. Uh, if there were not a three and a joker on the board, that literally would have just answered my question. Uh, we're placing it on the three because that escalates it less. Oh, okay. The joker, the, the uh, Jack of Diamonds goes on top of the closest open diamond card, which would be the six of diamonds right here. All we need to do is trigger a matrix overload in this direction. It'll be really easy because it's only 11 points and it can be any number. Oh, okay. Well, this just got a lot harder. The king of diamonds goes next to the highest appro uh, available uh, diamonds card. Now this just got harder. We need to like to get the king of diamonds, we either need to reset this ten of hearts or pull a ten of diamonds. If we pull the ten of diamonds, it would get rid of both of those royals, though. Royal found. Hack start. <laughs> wait, wait. I don't have to make hacks or keyboard noises with my mouth. I have hacks or keyboard here already. <laughs> All right, let's see what we draw. Uh, the Queen of Diamonds. Hey, remember how I was saying there's every <laughs> we have so many royal cards in the deck? Uh, so the diamonds are filled, so we need to place this near the highest red card that is open, which is the Seven of Hearts here. So there it goes. Uh, the King of Hearts. Every royal. Every royal is coming out of the woodwork. I, ha I, I got four hacks off, and every royal was like, stop that. Stop him! Unacceptable! So we'll put the five of hearts there. Oh no. Uh, if Luckily, with this many royals on the board and in this configuration, it's we have a lot of opportunity to fire matrix overloads. I hacked too much. My hacks were too powerful. The four of diamonds... I think the Four of Diamonds is... No, wait. The Four of Diamonds is not ice because we still have this Joker here. So this is the only place we can put it here. This triggers a Matrix Overload left up. Uh, left Matrix Overload is 5 and 7. That's 12. Is 12 enough to get a King? Kings have 13 health. So that, that Matrix Overload fires, but it doesn't do anything. Um, it... It triggers a matrix overload in the, in the adjacent cards, though, so this six and seven of hearts is enough to get rid of this queen of diamonds. <laughs> Royal defeated. Oh, mm, look at here. You know how I was talking about how the ten of diamonds is really going to help us out? Uh, here it is. The ten of diamonds on top of the ten of hearts. Uh, <laughs> Royal deactivated. And Matrix Overload right. <clears throat> Royal deactivated. We come down to the King of Hearts is the remaining uh, Royal on the board. There's still Royals in the deck, though. So don't get your hopes up. The Speaking of Royals in the deck, the Jack of Spades goes next to the Eight of Clubs because that's the closest card that it would fit on. Oh, hard reset. Hard reset. Play on the lowest card? Hard reset's on the lowest card, right? Hard reset uh, on the lowest card, the lowest value showing on the top card. If there's a tie, you can choose either of the lowest cards. Jokers have a value of zero, and their suit's wild. So we play on the lowest card on the board, which is this four, which... Thankfully, hard reset puts a joker back into the deck. So we have another hard reset inbound, if we can make it that far. The two of diamonds, which has one place on the, on the board, on top of that other hard reset. Oh, come on. 
The Ten of Spades. Um, okay, so the the Jack of Spades is the only one left, but it's suits. Suits and color don't matter when you're decimating the Jack Royal. So I'm going... And we've already gotten rid of the Diamond Royal. So I'm going to not escalate the board and put it on top of this Ten. If we ever get an Ace, we need... No, we need to... If you if you can't place a card, um, it gains health to the highest ranking ro the royal that is closest to the card. So like, this next card I'll explain. It let's say we can't place this six of clubs. We can place this six of clubs, but let's say we can't. Then this six health would get attached to this jack here. But we can, we can place it right here and actually get rid of that jack, <laughs> without escalating the board. <clears throat> Royal Hacksword. <laughs> Alright, let's draw our next card. Uh, the Seven of Spades. Uh, I see two places this could go, and one of them that will help us. I get it now, that's really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. I'm shocked we haven't had any ice uh, come up in this board yet. I think that Joker staying open for this long is really helping us. So I'm going to put it up here in the corner. It's not going to do anything for us, but it's not going to help. The setting for this game is so much fun. Yeah, it's oh, it's a fun way to like tell a like off the cuff cyberpunk story. Like I could be delving a lot further into the storyline here. I probably should because I'm technically still tagged to tabletop RPGs. I love cyber. I I have a mighty hankering for cyberpunk media recently. I don't know what it is. Our next card is the Ace of Diamonds, which uh, that's a soft reset we can play out on any card. Mm -hmm. Soft reset. Uh, I'm going to soft reset this 10 here because there are three 10s there and we're going to need one. So they go into the bottom of our execution stack and they'll come up later. The five of clubs. Uh, where can we place this? We can place it on this five where it will be very in the way. Well, if we place it on this five of hearts then we're guaranteed to place a higher heart on top of it, which will trigger the correct matrix overload for this king of hearts. And it won't escalate the board. Or we can play it on this two and it's completely out of the way. The only thing I don't like about cyberpunk is because of the heavy mechanical body alteration. I don't know why, they, but they give you the heebie-jeebies. That's fair. I think rather than advancing the board, I'm going to put this five here as an incentive to uh, correctly decimate that royal. Speaking of royals to decimate, the jack of uh, clubs goes next to that five of clubs, actually. Royal entered. The, a royal has entered the arena. The ace of hearts. We have another soft reset. Where should we place this soft reset? Um, I want to get a lot of high-value cards back into the uh into the stack so i'm tempted to reset um some of those nines up there but i don't know if there are hearts in there which is what we need um i'm gonna soft reset this nine of clubs up here because i don't remember what's under it and hopefully it's something useful I sound like a perfect presenter. I I try to have a very good presentational voice in this. So we're going to play the Ace of Hearts up here and hope that it puts a heart into our execution stack here. And our execution stack next gives us the Four of Clubs, which, whew, it's not ice yet, but that was close. Uh, four and five is nine, which is not enough to get rid of this Jack of Clubs, so I don't want to escalate the board there. Where else can I put this? It would escalate the board less on this two of diamonds. And it's the only place I can put it other than that ace of hearts. But if I put it up here, then that's more likely if I play something on top of the two of diamonds, if we ever get down to our hard reset, I can get that ace back. Because of getting the ace back for the hard reset on the on the Joker, which we know is at the bottom of the execution stack, I'm going to put it on top of this ace, which escalates the board more, but might save my butt in the long term. The two of hearts. 
uh, which has to go on top of this two or this ace of diamonds. Um, I'm willing to execute the board, or I'm willing to increment the board by one uh, for the chance of getting that ace of that other ace back. Uh, the nine of hearts is enough to get rid of the king there, and then uh, if we put it on the five of clubs here, we get rid of both the king of hearts, because seven and nine is over thirteen, and we get rid of the jack, because nine plus two is eleven, which is enough to get rid of the jack. So, we will, es we will increment the board by four points, but we'll get rid of two royals, and I'm willing to gamble there. So, boosh, boosh. Royals eliminated. The two of spades. Uh, that means that means we can either place it on the two of diamonds or the two of hearts. I'm gonna place it on the two of diamonds and hope that doesn't come back to bite me. The queen of spades. Speaking of royals, I think this is one of our last remaining royals. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Hang on. 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, there are... So we have 11 royals on the board right now. It's going right here. Um, and there are 12 royals in a deck. So we only have two, two live royals. So we have a good shot at winning here. Provided I play my cards right. I should have placed the queen down because that would have been an easier matrix overload to fire than this one, but we'll cross that bridge. Ace of clubs, soft reset. Uh, I'm soft resetting this nine of hearts because I, well, I don't particularly want us, it's, it's because we want that nine of hearts back, but there's a lot of lower value cards in that stack. So maybe we don't want to soft reset that. Let's soft reset a stack that we know has an ace under it. So we have an ace in the execution stack. Um, let's soft reset the four of clubs up here because we know there's an ace under there. So we trade an ace for another ace. An ace enters the execution stack and we'll get it back eventually. The three of hearts, which is thank Hylia, not ice. Um, we're going to put it on top of the two hearts because that increments the board the least. Uh, and it doesn't get in the way with this two of spades, which we might be able to use if we get a high enough spade to get rid of the queen of spades there. Next in the execution stack is the jack of hearts. Now, normally this would go in line with any red card, but there is only one royal remaining, royal space remaining. So it, he gets to hang out here. The good thing about the Jack of Hearts, however, is that any card we place here is guaranteed to fire a Matrix Overload to get rid of this Royal. The final Royal has entered the board. Your hacking must increase. Um, <laughs> so, actually, because of the way Matrix Overloads work, if we place a card here, if we manage to get a card that is large enough to fire a matrix, a successful matrix overload at the queen of spades here, it will fire at the jack of hearts and we win. So, good odds. Good odds. We have good odds. Speaking of cards we need, Super Saiyan Haxing Mode engaged. Uh, the eight of hearts. Cards we don't... Actually, this is a card we don't need. No! Um, we could place an eight here but it would not fire a successful matrix overload at the queen. So we're gonna place it up here and increment the board by one. Uh, on the uh, seven of spades. The 10 of clubs. The 10 of clubs, however, is enough to matrix overload uh, the queen because 12, right? 12. Am I right? Am I remembering correctly? Let me check the rules. Queens have 12 health. All cards in the overload must match the color of the queen. Royal eliminated. Now any card, any card we draw, gets rid of the, tw the jack of hearts. 
So what's next in our execution stack? Do we win? The Eight of Diamonds. Overkill. Matrix Overload. Royal Eliminated. Proletariat. <laughs> um. Proletariat Liberated. Royals Defeated. Hack Complete. So let's count our let's count what's left in the execution stack to see what kind of score we had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were twelve cards left in the execution stack, and I think I think they were all okay. Yeah, we had three cards left in the execution stack that were not from resets. Um so that really tells you something, how close this game could have been. If there was a Royal any later in the deck, basically, we could have gotten in a lot of trouble. Um, if you're playing it yourself, I would strongly suggest like going to the itch.io page for this game and like actually getting the rules, because they're really nicely styled, too. We got dangerously close. It was a very intense game of Matrix Overload. Um... We've got time for another hand or two of Matrix Overload, depending on how long I take to shuffle cards. And remember, you have to shuffle cards seven times before they are uh, likely a completely new iteration of cards. If I, if I am like serious about streaming tabletop games, I'm going to get a webcam that lets me have a good picture of the tabletop and I'm going to get a card shuffler because watching me struggle to shuffle cards does not for good radio make. <laughs> I'm terrible at shuffling cards. I need to learn to do, that, to do that properly. Hang on. You all get to come sit on the desk again. Boop while I link the rules to Matrix Overload, because it's really fun. Where's my phone, by the way? Oh, library is using it as a pillow. Sorry, kitty. Let me itch.io. Yeah. And then this is, this game is called Matrix Overload, right? Yes, Matrix Overload. Let's search for it. Matrix Overload. There's a lot of like just pinging from the Matrix uh, title. Uh, there's another, there's a first per person button hell called Matrix Overload. This is a card game. Hang on. Matrix Overload Cards. Huh. Well, I know I got this uh, through this website. Let me. I know I have it here. Pixel playing cards. People are selling asset packs for cards, but not the game Matrix Overload. Where? It. It's. It's a blast, honestly. Where did I get this? Hang on. Let me. Let me try a different way at this. If you look through the bundle... Hi, take me to my profile. Uh, sales and bundles. Oh, this is for creating a new sale or bundle. I'm, I forget my... Um, my itch.io account is designed for a creator because eventually I will be... Eventually, I will be making a game. Um, if I scroll down enough, there will be... Can I search this page? Ah, bundles. There we are. Matrix overload. Matrix. Are you sure? Matrix overload? Ma Matrix Overload is absolutely in this bundle. I don't know what they're talking about. Am I going crazy? <laughs> I know this game exists. 
because I downloaded it. And it's got to be from this bundle because it's the only thing I've bought on itch.io so far other than Osakawa Academy. Like, speaking of, Osakawa Academy is good. Who's eating my zoots? I'll read those later. Where is Matrix Overload, though? This is gonna bother me. Like, I want to be able to link this game for credit, because it's really well made. Did they, like, remove all the non-video game? No, because there's other... There's other, like, tabletop games in here, like, uh, Glitter Hearts. So where is Matrix Overload? This is gonna bother me. This is genuinely rustling my jimmies. If someone in the chat can, like, find it... I heard someone say that literally everyone should try their hands at creating a game, TTRPG, or other tabletop. That's fair. Uh... Honestly, probably the first thing I'll release on HIO is that uh, Wretched and Alone hack that we started the concept for. Uh, there's a card, there's like a, there's a pack, there's an asset pack for playing cards, which I'm going to use in a different project. Uh, although it would fit the Matrix Overload vibe very well. Spirits of Xanadu, Laser Girl, uh, Heavy Bullets, City Glitch. We played City Glitch. That was a good time. I want to play Stand Up at some point, despite not knowing anything about um, Persona. Uh, it's a Persona-themed Powered by the Apocalypse, and it looks really good. Can I find... Am I finding everything except the thing I'm looking for? Is that what's happening here? It seems to be what's happening here. There's actually some zines in this bundle. There's a lot in this bundle, by the way. Including oxen free. If you didn't get this bundle, you really messed out. I do hope they, like... Like, even just some of the games individually in this bundle are, like, a fantastic deal because they're on itch.io where you can you can designate your own price. Which, by the way, if I release something on itch.io, it's either going to be very cheap or free. Like, I'm going to make it, like, a few bucks, maybe. What I'm definitely going to do is anytime... <laughs> Uh, someone buys the game on itch.io, there's, it's gonna go into, I'm gonna enable it so that there's a pile of them that people can get if they feel like they need to not pay for it. Because I saw that a lot recently, and it's a really good idea. Ah, here we are, Matrix Overload. That's why I couldn't find it. It was spelled all leet-like for the title. Here we are. This is the game. You did find it. Matrix Overload. It's spelled all leet like. Of course. Of course it's spelled all leet like. That's why it didn't show up in the... Oh, I have brain. It didn't show up in the things. It didn't show up in the search bar because it's... um. It didn't show up in the search bar because it's lead. The doy. I have brain. Uh, yeah, this this is one of those games that has um, community copies. Everyone who buys a copy of Matrix Overload provides a copy for someone to download free of charge. These community copies of the game are intended for marginalized people and those who are experiencing financial hardships and cannot pay for a copy. If that applies, help yourself to a community copy. Yeah, like, if I ever release a game on H.I.O., it's that community copy concept is absolutely happening. And part of what I enjoy about H.I.O. is it's like a whole, the whole pay-what-you-want model, the Bandcamp model, so to speak. Yeah, the community copy is especially really nice of the developer. Um... Mm, it's really nice of their developer for like 
tabletop RPGs or any multiplayer game. It's bit okay. So this game was not a completely original thing. It's based on Grid Cannon by Tom Francis, uh, which is it seems to be the same basic idea. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's the same basic idea. Still. Uh, Grid Cannon's more of a... It, it's it's a re-theme. It's, it's a cyberpunk re-theme. I like that. Anyway, I believe Stand Up also has a community copy thing. That's really nice. Um, I, does Glitter Hearts have a community copy thing going? I hope it does. Because Glitter Hearts good. Anyway, let's set you back over here and we'll play another Hand of Matrix Overload. Fix the camera so everyone can see. We'll see if I can shuffle the cards fast enough for, for us to play Matrix Overload. That's one. Everybody keep... I want to try Glitter Hearts someday. I want to try Glitter Hearts someday. I just don't know enough about Magical Girls to run the game myself. Everybody in chat keep track of both how many times I fail and how many times we've done the thing. That's one fail. Two successes. Three successes. Woo. Four successes. The only trouble is the way I do this, it kind of bends the cards, so I have to like bend them back the other way. It's not like this was a rare heirloom deck of cards. I got it for like 50 cents in a gas station. That's two fails, by the way. Is this three or four successes? One of the two for sure. Either way, we're halfway there. That's another success. We'll call that four just for safety. That's another one, five. Let's handle the deck the other way so they bend back the other way. Six. Seven successes with two fails. That's pretty good for bridge shuffling cards. Uh, I M O. Yeah, we got we got time. We got fifteen minutes to play another hand of Matrix Overload. First card is the Nine of Spades. Second card is the Ace of Spades. The execution stack is mixed bag tonight. Uh, Seven of Diamonds. The Five of Spades. What's this? The Six of Spades. The Three of Clubs. The, oh, no. Royal. That's the Queen of Diamonds. We'll lay her down later. The Black Joker. Oh, another royal queen of spades and the two of diamonds oh glitter hearts came with the bundle for equality yeah it did like uh raz supported the kickstarter for glitter hearts and i got it through the bundle a lot of people got it through the bundle okay so now we get to place these royals the queen of diamonds goes next to the highest level diamond and the Queen of Spades goes to the highest level spade. All right, let's see what the execution st So we say, uh, we say uh, I plus plus, and we see what the execution stack has for us. And it's the Ace of Diamonds, soft reset. Um, I'm soft resetting the hard reset. <laughs> 
now I really want to play it. That's fair. Um, I'm going to soft reset the black joker onto the bottom of the execution stack so it can save us later. Uh, because there's not really any... Uh, the only other option I would have had there was soft resetting the 9 back into the deck. But we're going to need that 9 to get rid of the queen anyway. Immediate soft reset. I++, plus plus, what does the execution stack have for us? Uh, the execution stack makes a little pop, and it spits out the two of hearts. Uh, we can put this on the either of the aces in the center or on this two. I'm going to not iterate the board and put it on the two of diamonds. Uh, I++ plus plus and the execution stack gives us the eight of clubs, which... Oh, I could put on the Ace of Diamonds to immediately, um, to immediately de-res. What if you start with all the Royals? If you pull all the Royals at the beginning of your, uh, while you're building the grid, it's, it's probably really hard, um, because you have so many opportunities for ice, you know, so everybody can build ice. Uh, that's what makes this game really dangerous, is if you over-increment the board and the Royals start building ice. Um, I don't want to increment the board that quickly, but I have many other low-value cards on the board. So I'm going to play this 8 over the Ace of Spades, and we're going to derez that Royal immediately. Royal deleted. I plus plus and we get a three of hearts. What if there is no royals but you still ice? I'm not sure what happens if you if there are no live royals on the board but you ice. That I should check the rules for. Hang on. Let me think for a second. I'm gonna not into uh increment the board and put it on the three of clubs. Royals but no ice. Or ice but no royals. If you cannot place a card in the matrix, uh if there are no royals around the matrix when you draw a card that you cannot play is, is placed as preventative ice, the royals have heard rumors that you're coming from them, coming for them. Place the ice following the rules for placing a royal. When a royal is placed on that spot with preventative ice, it automatically adds the ice to its health. Uh, cards played as ice are never returning. They, they just are stuck under a, a royal. So if you play an ice card, let's say this was like... Well, there's no card that would come out as ice. So, like, you place an ice like you would place a royal, and then whatever royal eventually shows up there gets that ice. Which is a great way to immediately die if you get, like, some kind of high number ice and then pull a king. Anyway. I++, plus plus, and our next card is the Six of Diamonds, which I'm gonna play over the Six of Spades and get rid of this royal, because it doesn't iterate the board, and it's correct to get rid of that royal, so... Royal eliminated. I plus plus the king of diamonds puts us here. Ooh, that's going to be a difficult one because we have the eight of clubs here. Knew that was going to come back to bite me. I plus plus, we have the six of clubs, which I'm going to not iterate the board and put it on top of the six. I plus plus six of hearts. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to not iterate the board and put it there. <laughs> Every six. What are the odds of that? Every six being immediately on the board? That's got to, that's got to mean something. I plus plus three of, uh, three of spades, rather. Not iterate the board, put it there. The red joker, hard reset. So our soft reset is hard reset into the bottom of the execution stack. Goodbye. We'll need you later anyway. I plus plus. Uh, the seven of clubs. Ugh. So we could iterate the center of the board seven ticks. We could iterate these sixes one. We should iterate these sixes one tick because we know there are no more sixes. So we'll iterate these sixes one tick to put that seven down. Uh, oh no, I plus plus the king of clubs goes next to this eight up here. Uh, 
Oh, well, that one won't be too bad. All we need to play is uh, 13 for kings, so we need to play a 4 of clubs at minimum. Uh, I plus plus the 9 of diamonds. Oh, no. Because we could play it here and get rid of that king, but then that makes this king really difficult to get rid of. But there's no other avenue for this king. Neither is there an avenue for this king either. Um... Oh, remember to hydrate. Thank you for reminding me. So let's think here. Uh, we place, we iterate the board once. There are still two aces in the pack, in the in the execution stack. We still have two soft resets. We don't know where they are. We have two soft resets on the bottom of the deck. Uh, no, we have a soft reset and a hard reset at the bottom of the execution stack. But we don't know where the other two aces are. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play to get rid of this royal. It's gonna bite me. It's gonna bite me. But royal eliminated. The Ten of Spades. I wish we had a place to put this that we could use it, uh, but we don't. <laughs> I'm going to iterate the board as little as possible and put it on the Nine of Spades and hope we don't need the Nine of Spades for something. I plus plus and we get an Eight of Hearts, which we can put on either of these Sevens uh, or... Yeah, we can put it on either of these sevens, which is a good one. Risky move, let's hope for a good one. Exactly. I'm going to put it on the seven of diamonds, because those two... The, these two royals have been eliminated, so... This eight's effectiveness... Is limited, at best. Um, the four of clubs... Uh, there's really only one place this can go, onto the three of spades. Goodbye, three of spades. Goodbye, dirt! Um, hang on, so... If we get the three of clubs, we need to put it in the center to get rid of this royal, by the way. Because... Oh, we should have put the four of clubs there. Anyway. <laughs> the three of clubs would have been better because it would have been less iterative. Anyway. Uh, the four of spades, coming to prove my point. Um, four of spades can only go in this four... Well, it could go on the on the hard reset or the two of hearts, but I don't want it there. The ace of hearts, soft reset. I'm resetting these tens into the deck. No, wait. I lied. I'm resetting this nine here so that this king is easy to get rid of. Soft reset. These three cards go into the bottom of the execution stack. There is a nine is all we know that's in the execution stack the stream may remember more, but oh well. <laughs> the Ten of Diamonds. Um, I'm going to not iterate the board and put it here. That may come back to bite me uh, if I don't have any resets to get those tens out of a disadvantageous position, but oh well. The Jack of Hearts goes next to the highest level heart available, which is this Two of Hearts, ironically. Uh, two of Clubs, uh, showing me that I need to not get cocky. Uh, I'm going to put it on top of the hard reset. No, wait. Collar doesn't matter for the Jacks, so I'll non-iterative play. Uh, seven of Hearts. <sighs> Where can I put this? Seven of Clubs. Yeah, I'm putting it on top of the Seven of Clubs. Uh, what's next? The Queen of Hearts. Uh, goes next to that Seven of Hearts, actually. Should be a relatively easy royal to dispatch. The Four of Hearts shows up to tell us that, yes, this will be a very easy royal to dispatch. Uh, no, that'll only make 11. <sighs> that'll only make 11. 
um, and it'll iterate the board four times. Do we want that? Queens need 12. Um, I'm going to non-iterate and put the 4 here. That might come back for me, but oh well. Uh, oh, Ace of Clubs. Uh, soft reset. Soft reset. Uh, I'm going to soft reset these 10s because I know there's at least two 10s there. Soft reset those onto the bottom of the execution stack so they can come back and help us later. Uh, I think that's all our soft resets. So now we know where all the soft resets and hard resets are. So now this game just got exponentially harder. <laughs> but we have a lot of low value spots open to place cards that come out of the stack on. Execution stack, nine of hearts. Oh, that's another card I could use to get rid of the queen of hearts there. But I don't want to put it in the center of the board because that makes the king of clubs genuinely difficult to get. Because we would need the nine of clubs and then some. So I'm going to put it on the eight of hearts because it iterates the board the least. Yes, we're sequestering high value cards there. But it's four royals that haven't been on the board. The nine of clubs has arrived. Uh, and I'm put no, I'm not putting it in the center of the board. That's uh, we're putting it here on the ace of uh, in line with the king of clubs. So now we only need a four of clubs, which I think is tied up in one of our stacks here. Four clubs of four of clubs or more, in order to get rid of the king of clubs. Execution stack the ten of hearts. I. I, 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 um, I'm going to play it over the seven of hearts so that it is easier for us to get rid of the queen of hearts here because then we can play we can play a relatively low value card in the center of the board to get rid of the king of clubs and then a relatively low value heart or diamond to get rid of the queen of hearts uh, next card on the stack is the two of spades which is going on top of that other two because I don't want to iterate the board. Next card is the three of diamonds. Um, the three. So placing the three of diamonds. Hey there, class escaped. Uh, I'm almost done streaming actually. Once we're done with this hand of matrix overload. So if I place the three in the center of the board, it eliminates this queen, and we need a three or more. Yeah, we need a four or more to get rid of the king of clubs anyway, so it's a it's an advantageous play, even though we're iterating the center of the board three ticks. Uh, royal eliminated. Uh, okay, the ten of clubs is has turned up. Um, I'm gonna play it on top of the nine of clubs. It makes uh, gaining access to eliminating the king of clubs a lot easier. We only need a three or more. Uh, iterate off the stack. The Jack of Diamonds, the closest um, place to place that is the Four of Hearts there. <sighs> Ironically, placing any card on these Jokers, uh, the correct card on these Jokers. Mm, if we would, if we were to place an eight here, we would we would double uh, overload and beat both of those jacks so depending on what comes up here might be worth uh, the queen of clubs goes next to the highest ranking club card which is the ace of clubs right there uh, okay uh, this is going to be difficult we got to get lucky uh, execution increase uh, the eight of diamonds where do we put this uh, if we put it centered here, we get rid of both of those jacks. And it's likely to attract the Queen of Diamonds, which I don't think we've seen, because the Queen of Hearts is here. Yes, it iterates the board eight ticks, but we have other low-value cards to play over. So I'm going to place eight, Matrix Overload, uh, Royal Eliminated.
Royal eliminated. Uh, we draw our next card, the Four of Diamonds. Which... I'm going to place over the Four of Hearts. Okay. Uh, what's next? Double kill. I agree. Uh, Mubot's reminding us that we have live captions now. Uh, the King of Hearts has arrived to yell and scream and make me panic. Highest value, highest value hearts are already occupied, so it would be the highest value red card, which is the Eight of Diamonds here. That makes this king incredibly difficult to kill. <laughs> we have a problem, especially since the Nine and Ten of Hearts are there. We need a soft reset or a hard reset, and to get the soft or hard reset, we need to run through our execution stack, which is unlikely. This game is getting less and less likely to have a win condition the more we play. The King of Spades has showed up to really drive the point home that this is going to be a difficult game to win. Oh no, this is really hard now because uh, we're going to need a high value club to get rid of this king up here and then a high value spade to get rid of this king here. Oh, this is a really difficult hand. Uh, next card is the eight of spades. <sighs> hmm. I'm gonna play it over the five of spades because that gives us a better angle. We need the heart of the cards. Uh, this eight of spades gives us a better angle at getting this king after we've gotten the king of clubs or vice versa. The heart of the cards! The heart of the cards, Yugi! Heart of the cards! The five of hearts. Uh, thankfully, that's not ice yet. I'm going to play it on the four of diamonds because that iterates the board the least. Uh, the jack of spades. Speaking of heart of the cards, there's a Powered by the Apocalypse game called These Cards Have Hearts, which... I have some opinions about, and I would love to open up on another Tuesday stream. Uh, so any card we play on this two of spades here gets rid of that jack of uh, that jack of spades. Let's just hope it's a three of some kind, so we don't iterate the board too much. Seven of spades has show, has showed up to tell us that you need to play a card or get iced. Uh, 8 and 7 is 15, which would be enough to kill this royal here. Yeah, since I have class, like, all my freaking day on Tuesday. I know. Um, oh, but that iterates the board a lot. But it gets rid of that royal, and the other royal spaces are closed. Uh, I'm going to play the 7 over the Ace of Clubs, because this is a risk-taking... This has been a risk-taking hand, and we're taking more risks... Royal eliminated. Tuesdays are the best stream day for me because you're busy with class. Uh, five of clubs. Uh, so we can play the five of clubs here. Iterate the board three ticks and get rid of the jack of spades. Wait, the five of clubs is enough to get rid of the king. And that would only iterate the board two ticks. Um, yes. Absolutely. Royal eliminated. And then we only have to play a six here. Six and eight is five. Wait, brain loading. Hang on. Five. So there's, hang on, brain loading. Brain loading. If we play a six here, that's 14, which would be enough to get rid of this, so so we're still good. The Jack of Clubs, uh, which it only has one available. Uh, all Royals available. Be careful. Oh, Rumble Thunder. Um, next card's the Five of Diamonds, uh, which we... Uh, we can either play... I'm going to play the Five of Diamonds here. To not iterate the board and get rid of a royal. Royal eliminated. Oh, hard reset. Uh, this resets the lowest value stack on the board. And that means we're also to the bottom of our execution stack. So we've got a lot of 
resets inbound. Hard reset. Oh, the th yeah, the the thunder uh, has uh, harbrung our uh, our final cards here. Uh, soft reset has arrived. Uh, I am going to soft reset the. Oh, where did we put the ten of clubs, or the ten of spades? Oh no. Um. I'm going to soft reset the center of the board because it makes the king of spades more likely to be able to be hit. Soft reset. Those two cards go to the bottom of the execution stack. We see what's next in the stack. The ace of spades. All of our aces <laughs> are in the execution stack. Um, what, what do we reset now? Uh, I'm going to reset the ten of hearts because we're going to need that high value heart card to get rid of the king of hearts here so soft reset they go on to the bottom of the execution stack and we pull our next card i need to play this quickly because i'm out of time the eight of clubs uh uh the eight of clubs I'm gonna play into the seven of spades up here because it doesn't iterate the board that way and it doesn't block our matrix overload here and we it's not worth playing to iterate the board that far to get rid of this single jack. Our next card in the execution stack is the nine of diamonds, which we don't have a lot of use for. Um, I'm gonna play it over the nine of heart. I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna play it over the eight of clubs up here. Uh, because that's sequestered and that's not going to be a problem. Uh, the nine of spades. Uh, I could iterate the center of the board a lot and get this royal, but that makes this harder. We know. Wait, 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 wait. We know there's another soft reset. We know there's another soft reset and another hard reset in the execution stack. I'm willing to gamble to get rid of this royal. Royal eliminated. And hopefully get another soft reset or hard reset. Hard reset won't help us very much, but soft reset. Soft reset will let us reset the center of the board so we can get to the king of hearts here. What's our next card? The ten of spades. It really doesn't help us. Um, we could play the ten of spades over our hard reset here. The joker to get rid of this uh, jack of spades because the ace is one point. That iterates the board incredibly, but we're down to our last royal, so I'm gambling. Royal eliminated. The ten of diamonds. Oh, that doesn't help us either. I'm going to play it over the nine of diamonds. Oh, come on. The two of diamonds. That's, oh, that was so close to being ice. We were just saved by that ace there. Oh, no. The two of hearts. Oh, Okay, the two of clubs, there's all our twos. Luckily we can stack like that. Oh, all of our twos, all four of our twos in that one stack, okay. The three of diamonds uh, has to go on top of that two. The five of clubs, oh, where can this go? We're putting it on top of the five of diamonds. The six of spades. Uh, has to go on top of the five of clubs there. The six of diamonds. Ooh, this is getting spooky, everybody. The six of clubs. Oh, no. Are we playing Klondike Solitaire here? Six of hearts. No. The seven of clubs. Uh, where can that go? Only onto that six. Oh, board iterate. Oh, the seven of hearts. I really wish I could put it here, here, but I can't. Oh, no. No, I think we lose. I think we lose. We can't. We lose. We don't have any way to get the king of hearts here. 
we lose. We don't have any soft resets. We're out of cards. And we didn't have enough oomph to kill the King of Hearts. The King of Hearts eliminates you. Alright, folks. Whew. I'm out of time. I have to sleep very soon. Uh, this has been Matrix Overload. I'm going to shuffle these cards off stream. Let me just pick them up super quick. We got down to the last royal on this last hand of Matrix Overload. I really like Matrix Overload. I'm going to play more hands of it. Like, probably as a stream filler when I'm not sure what else to do. Um, but that was a really close hand of Matrix Overload. Um, we, play, we played a lot of risky, risky hacks. And uh, they came back to bite us in the end. That final royal had too much power. We sequestered too many of our high-level cards uh, in dead-end portions of the Matrix. Anyway, that's it. That's all, folks. This was super fun. I agree. Uh, Friday is next stream. Uh, oh, what are we going to do on Friday? That's a good question. Probably more Xenoblade. If not more Xenoblade, then more 51 games. Uh, if not more 51 games, then um, something out of the, the bundle that Matrix Overload came out of. Anyway, I need to be done, y'all. Sleep is now. Everyone get their water. Everyone uh, have a good week. Everyone stretch. You know? Uh, and if you're catching this on the VOD, I'm glad you watched all the way to the end. Uh, see you all later.